Fox Sports. We are by far. We are Minnesota. Remarkable night last night for rookie Max Kepler and the Twins as they thump the Indians handily. They'll try to make it two in a row here tonight. In a four game series with Cleveland, the Twins have played pretty well against the Cleveland Indians. And in game two, it'll be Kyle Gibson going for the Twins. Tough assignment for the Twins. They got 19 hits last night. They'd be happy with about half of that tonight against Carlos Carrasco. And we welcome you to Progressive Field. Dick Bramer along with Roy Small. Yeah, it was a very good night last night for the Twins lineup but specifically right fielder Max Kepler. Well it's hard to imagine a young man a young player first year in the big leagues having a uh, more sensational night than Max Kepler it did last night. And if you look at these uh, three swings on three fastballs that are pretty much in the same spot and they look pretty similar it's because they are similar and that's the Max Kepler strength is taking that sweet swing up there time in and time out and that swing plane coming through the ball allows for the kind of extension that results in home runs. Well the Twins had a winning month of July Kepler a big reason why look what he's done since July 1st 11 home runs that's the most in the major leagues 29 runs batted in second in the major leagues this from a guy who's only spent a couple of months in the big leagues he's emerged as a very viable American League Rookie of the Year candidate twins hit five home runs last night so Kepler's production just part of a power surge we'll talk more about that when we come back to Cleveland in just a moment. Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. 
and by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. The Twins have played well against the Indians this year. They've hit a lot of home runs against the Cleveland Indians, and they'll try to do that again here in game two of this four game series. And where has this power been? My goodness, the Twins since May 25th among the most powerful lineups in the American League and remarkable given the fact I'm not sure they even hit a home run in the month of April. <laughs> Dick Bramer Roy Smalley with you back at Progressive Field here in Cleveland and it has been a sight for sore eyes this twins lineup has had a hard time scoring runs and they've been out homered so many times over the last five six years now some promising signs in the power department. I think we always thought this team was going to score runs. I don't think we thought it was going to be via the long ball nearly as much as it has been these last two months. They are all up and down the lineup swinging the bats in exceedingly well. 191 home runner pace that they're on right now. I don't think we expected that from this club, but we knew Dozier would hit him. We knew Sano would hit him. Max Kepler has emerged as a home run threat. Eddie Rosario is resurgent, and the Twins lineup is having fun. Up and down the lineup, everybody getting into the act, having good at bats, getting good balls to hit, and when they get those balls to hit, they're hitting them out of the ballpark. And the hope is that uh, they'll score enough runs here tonight in support of Kyle Gibson. He's had a couple of good starts in a row, hoping to beat the Indians for the first time this year when we come back. the flair to the future. He has three tonight, and the rookie is having himself quite a night. What a catch by Byron Buxton. Almost as much as we admire champions, we adore prodigies. Seduced by the promise, captivated by the potential. Oh, diving catch by Rosario in the gap. So much of the world belongs to the young. We chase the next and worship the latest. He's in with a bases clearing triple. Sano with a long blast and a three run home run. The Twins youth, some of the league's greatest. For years, we heard about the uh, prospects that were down in the minor leagues, and now we're seeing most, if not all, of them. Max Kepler is here, quite an impact he's made. 270 uh, man games or boy games if you want to uh, extend the youth angle a little bit 24 years old or younger 
And only the Rangers in baseball in the American League have had more games started by that young a group. And Paul Molitor will turn uh, 60 years of age here in a little bit. Uh, he's uh, managing a bunch of young guys. And uh, Brian Dozier, one of the veterans, leading off on the Menards batting order. Another veteran, Joe Maurer. Then the Twins go young with Kepler and Sano, Suzuki, Escobar, Rosario, Polanco, and Santana. And Dozier in the box. We're ready to go. Carlos Carrasco is on the mound and he delivers ball one. Well, this young man, Carlos Carrasco, really, really has come into his own this year. Has terrific stuff and is finally commanding all of his pitches. Having a terrific year. 82 degrees at game time, one and one. With 19 hits last night, and Carrasco among the stingiest in the league in terms of giving up hits. You look at the Cleveland Indian rotation and the opponent batting average, you've got Bauer 233, Salazar last night starter 222, Kluber 216. Carrasco opponent batting average is 205. He was hurt. He doesn't have enough innings pitched to classify or to be classified among the league leaders. Now, our ground ball to the left side, Ramirez has it, firing to Napoli, one away. Northland Ford defense for the Indians. We've got Abraham Almonte in left field. Young Tyler Naquin in center, Lonnie Chisenhall in right. Ramirez will be the regular third baseman now. Lindor, Kipnis, very good up the middle. Napoli at first and Perez behind the plate. One down, and here's Joe Maurer. Lost in Kepler's heroics last night. Maurer with a four hit game, including his ninth home run of the year. Strike one. Maurer facing Carrasco. Had pretty good success against him. Swing and a miss, and it's on two. C.B. Buckner behind the plate. And Manny Gonzalez, Jim Reynolds, Field, and Culbreth on the bases. Oh, and two to Maurer. Foul tip, and Perez hangs on. With two away in the first, let's find Audra Martin. Well, guys, Max Kepler was the big story last night, but something you might not know about that game is Max Kepler and Jorge Polanco for years have been using the same model bat, and sometimes they actually just use each other's during the game. Well, last night was one of those instances where Max grabbed Jorge's bat, and obviously it worked like a charm. Now, the thing is, once that bat is broken, it will go to the archives with the Twins. So that means when that bat is eventually on display, this night from Max Kepler will actually be represented by a bat that says Jorge Polanco. So an interesting story there, but of course, both the guys said in the meantime, until that bat's broken, they hope it continues to be hot for both of them. One and oh to Kepler. And now a strike. Now we're seeing an example of the kind of stuff that Carlos Carrasco has. He dropped in that uh, nice dewdrop curveball for a strike there. Pitched before 98 mile an hour fastball. That's what he blew Joe Maurer away with. And, 298 mile an hour fastballs and a curveball to Joe. Here's, that ball is awfully close. That ball here, at least on, in, in the ballpark, on the ballpark gun, 97 miles an hour just off the inside corner. We talked about this last night. Kepler has a, an amazing ability to know right where that inside corner is. You don't see that that often for a left hand for a young kid like that. Two and two now. And flared foul. Three home runs, two other well hit balls, including a single. And his average is up to 256. 203 at bats and 44 runs batted in. Second on the team to Brian Dozier in the RBI department. Dozier with 54. 
And now three and two. He's drawn 23 walks. He struck out 47 times. Full count. Sano on deck. And Kepler takes a walk. Those walks will start happening more and more, and the strikeouts will come down. The ratio that you just mentioned will change an awful lot over in the next couple of years for, for Max Kepler as he learns more and more, gets more, and com more comfortable with American League pitchers and what they're trying to do with him. He's still going around the league seeing a lot of guys for the first time. And that ratio, I, I'm pretty confident, will change quite a bit. Here is Sano. He's been in and out of the lineup for most of the last week, in as the designated hitter tonight. Perez sets up on the outside corner. And Sano takes one down the middle. I think we all thought that the Twins might hit more home runs this year than last, but we figured Sano would be a bigger part of that power surge. He's hit 15 home runs, but the team has hit 124. Just off the outside corner, one and one. Don't want to forget about Trevor Plouffe either. He's been a, a very solid 20 home run at least right. a year guy for the uh, Twins for quite a while. Good run producer and has been uh, beset with injuries this year. Really unfortunate. He, Trevor's just never quite been able to get on track. Every time he starts getting hot, something else happens. A lot of other, a lot of home runs would have been added from uh, Trevor to that total as well. And so takes down the middle of strike one and two. Kloof with just seven home runs. Last year, the Twins hit 156 home runs, and as we showed you in the pregame show, on a pace to eclipse 190 home runs on the season. Kepler dives back. So we have now seen Miguel Sano take two fastballs down the middle. And one of the things that gets in uh, Miguel's way, I think, every once in a while, he tends to guess uh, pitch to pitch and. Really easy to be wrong a lot if every pitch you think you're look thinking something else. I know he's got this good good curveball in his mind. A fly to center field and going back is Nick one a few steps and that ends the inning. No score after a half inning. Kyle Gibson will take the mound for the Twins. Into the playoffs a few years ago, into the wild card game. They are leading the division and they have dominated everybody in the division except the Minnesota Twins, who've won six of the ten games. The interesting uh, line there is the season series with Detroit. Cleveland leading the Tigers by four games. If Detroit had just managed to win two more games, they'd be in a dead heat with the Indians, but they haven't, and so they got a little ground to make up. The Menards batting order for the Indians Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, Francisco Lindor, Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, then Lonnie Chisholm, Tyler Naquin, Abraham Almonte, and Roberto Perez. 
Kyle Gibson on the mound for the Twins. Fresh off of two really, really good starts. Gibson misses. No, he hot hit the inside corner to Santana. One strike. Santana is not your prototypical leadoff batter, but there aren't many of those around in baseball anymore. And a base hit to right field. Santana's aboard with a leadoff single. Not a threat to steal, but he's a high on base percentage guy, and with the 22 home runs. Oh, maybe Jock Jones was a pioneer 15 years ago, hitting in the leadoff spot as a power hitter. Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Santana, Rosario, Kepler across the outfield. Polanco starting at third. Escobar, Dozier up the middle. Maurer at first. Suzuki behind the plate. One of the reasons the Twins started Polanco at third. Of course, Sano's had some uh, defensive problems. And uh, typically, Gibson keeps his infielders busy with a lot of ground ball outs. Outside, Kipnis, ball one. You mentioned Santana as the uh, non prototypical leadoff hitter. And of course, Jock Jones, who is terrific in, as a leadoff hitter that could get you a quick, uh, quick run. Ricky Henderson, I think, was the pioneer of that. But yet, Ricky was also the speed guy who could steal a base, draw walks. Yeah, Tim bet. Raines, his compliment in the National League. Ricky was the prototypical leadoff hitter and then hit home runs, too. Right. <laughs> Doing a pretty good cleanup hitter. 2 0 now to Kipnis. Santana can steal a base. He's gotten four of them. That's to left. And Santana retreats and makes the catch of the line drive one away. Kyle Gibson's been pretty good in his last two starts. The hope is he can uh, spin a good one up there tonight. Well, he's done such a better job of mixing pitches, of uh, all of his pitches, with the fastball with the slider and changeup. But the biggest difference has been his ability to trust the sink on his fastball and to come inside on uh, both left handed and right handed hitters. And to the degree that he continues to do that, I think he will continue to pitch very, very well. We talk about it all the time. Bert talks about it. Jack Morris and I, all of us, talk about command of the fastball. But that really means both sides of the plate aggressively. Now, you don't like giving up a leadoff single, but in Gibson's case, that in itself was a sign yeah. of improvement. <laughs> Two starts ago, he gave up a leadoff home run to Mookie Betts. And in his start against the Orioles, he gave up a first pitch home run to Adam Jones. Lindor, the batter, one strike. We're walking into the uh, off the bus today to get to the ballpark. Uh, Dan Glad and I who rode in on the bus with Kyle Gibson. We're walking into the into the stadium toward the clubhouse, and Kyle turned to us and said, "So, what should I throw Santana so he doesn't hit it out of the ballpark?" <laughs> <laughs> and a ground ball base hit right field. Santana to second. Hold up there. First and second, only one out, and that'll bring up Mike Napoli. Homered in three straight games. Big fly, and when he hits them so high, they stay in the air a long time. He did that again last night. And so he's not someone you want to necessarily face with two men on, but here he is with one out. Napoli very strikeout prone 134 strikeouts in 368 at bats. But he has driven in 74 runs. Gibson starts him low ball one. Well he is very dangerous obviously men on sc in scoring position and is capable of hitting the ball at any ballpark anywhere in the ballpark anytime but he can be pitched to as well. Napoli tied for fifth in the league and runs batted in. Side and 2 and 0. Oh. The biggest problem that Kyle will have is is getting behind hitters. 2 and 0, oh, 3 and 1 can't doesn't uh, get strike one. It generally happens early in the game's first two innings, and then he kind of finds it. That's generally the issue for Kyle is just not throwing enough strikes early. 3 and 0. Oh. Ramirez on deck. In 
anybody in his last start. Don't want to fill the bases here, but you don't dare groove one to Napoli either. Three and zero, oh, he will be green lighted. Three and one. Walks typically not an issue for Kyle. Seven walks in the month of July, 31 and two thirds innings. There really is a difference, though, when you take the next step as a as a pitcher. There really is a, a difference between commanding the uh, the strike zone, meaning you don't walk anybody, but then command in the strike zone, meaning you you can throw the ball for strikes where you want to. And that's what we're seeing here. Kind of struggling just a little bit. Fouled into the camera well, back out near third base where Polanco will retrieve it. The question for pitchers will always be: Can you get ahead? Throwing quality strikes, or do you have to get ahead by throwing the ball right down the middle? And that—that that really is pitching. Santana at second, Lindor at first. Ground ball to third, Polanco to second, relay to first, double play, Taylor made as the Twins go around the horn. And the Indians come up empty handed in the first. A plateau in the 280-290 range, but that's quite a plateau after he got off to such a terrible start, hitting about 200 in the first two months of the year. He's since May 31st hit 340. Well, he's just been absolutely terrific, and there's a reason for it. He and uh, Tom Brunanski work really, really hard every day in the uh, cages, most notably the. Private cage underneath the uh, the stadiums. I'll tell you when I when I am around the ball club as we look at the uh, highest batting averages among uh, catchers in uh, Major League Baseball since May 31st. And Kurt Suzuki at the very top of that list, hitting 340, as Dick mentioned. And tap back to the mound. Easy play for Carrasco. I want to talk about Kurt though when we get a chance because I. I his his work with Tom Bernanski is really really uh, something. As when I'm with the club, I, I I spend a lot of time sitting on a chair, a folding chair, watching uh, Bruno and Rudy Hernandez work with the uh, hitters. And Kurt Suzuki, since he's been here, is just a grinder, work workaholic, and he works hard on his mechanics. And Bruno's so good with mechanics. But Bruno made a wonderful, wonderful. Big league hitting coach suggestion to, to Kurt that I think really turned him around. Outside to Escobar. Kurt was working so hard on his mechanics and where his hands were and his leg drive and all of this kind of stuff. And finally, Bruno said, You know what, Kurt? 
let's forget about about all that. Let's let, just try to get some rhythm up there at the plate. Just get forget about mechanics. Just get a little a little tempo and a little rhythm as you get gather on your back leg and and, and move into the ball. And from that time on, Kurt said he just absolutely felt better and he has scalded the ball to the tune of 340 ever since that little that little tip from Bruno. So it's not all mechanics. Sometimes it's it's uh, from a hitting coach, a good hitting uh, instructor will will help your mind and will also give you a little tip sometimes that's kind of outside the box and that will really really turn a guy around. Two and one Escobar. One gone here in the twin second. Rosario will follow. And Escobar ended up lunging after it, tapping it foul. Two and two. And Escobar has his average up to 271. Escobar in his big league career, a 258 hitter. Two and two from Carrasco. And he fouls it back. Escobar started the year, of course, as the Twins shortstop, but the lineup wasn't clicking remotely like it is now. Twins are looking for offense wherever they could get it, and eventually they settled on Nunez, who came out of the gates hitting right away this year when he got the opportunity to play. And then Escobar's had some injury issues as well. And Tapper, easy play for Kipnis, two down. And before Rosario's at bat, let's go to Audra Martin. Eddie Rosario's home run last night was one of 10 RBI from the young guys on this Twins roster. But the truth is, those young guys have been contributing all season long. Almost 30% of the Twins' home runs this year have come from guys who are 24 years old or younger. 26.4% of the runs and 28.5% of RBI have come from that group. Now, there's five guys on this roster who are under 24 years old. The only one not in the roster to, or on the lineup tonight is uh, uh, Byron Buxton. Good news, guys. They are still uh, anticipating his return in the next few days, but the young guys are definitely stepping up to the plate. Well, thank you, Andre and Rosario. On the first pitch, lifts a foul pop. Did you hear how she did that, stepping up to the plate? Did you, did you hear how Andre did that? Did the young guys are stepping up mm -hmm, to the plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little double entendre there. As Rosario was uh, getting into the batter's box, one strike. And a high fastball swing and a miss. Rosario last year 453 at bats. He had 13 home runs and hit 267. And he's hoping to put together similar numbers. Of course, he spent a good part of the season in Rochester. Owen oh 2. Popped up. And back is Perez, but it's out of play. Mentioned it the other day when the Twins were wrapping up the homestand, they had, uh, other than uh, the pitcher, Eduardo Escobar on Sunday was the only position player who had spent a full year in the big leagues. And tonight the Twins have three guys who spent a full year in the big leagues, including Escobar. 0 and 2 to Rosario. Ground ball right side and through. Twins got a two out walk on the first now a two out hit from Rosario and that'll bring up Polanco. To a two strike hit in there by Eddie Rosario might have swung in a ball but he but uh, an 0 and 2 but did foul it managed to foul back the high fastball and then got a look like a little uh, change up or maybe a slider that didn't break real, real hard that uh, he was able to ground into right field. Rosario really, really swinging the bat much more like we saw the second half of last season. Here's Polanco. He had one of several oh and by the way nights last night for the Twins. <laughs> yeah. Oh and by the way Joe Maurer got four hits and hit a home run. Oh and by the way Jorge Polanco hit two triples. Oh and by the way Maurer almost hit for the cycle. 
and you get the idea. It was just a really good night for the Twins lineup beyond what Max Kepler did. That is just foul. And it's one and one to Polanco. Carlos Carrasco tonight making his 100th big league start. And he missed most of the month of May with a left hamstring injury while he was covering first base. He pulled a hamstring. Well, he's got A plus stuff. There's no question. The 95 to 99 mile an hour fastball. He's got a really nice curveball and a changeup, a good changeup. When he's getting the most important thing for Carrasco, I think, is when he's getting that curveball over, then it's it, what hitters try to do is eliminate pitches in a, in a pitcher's arsenal. So if a guy's got three pitches, you say, okay, I, he can't get this one over. It makes him a two pitch pitcher. Let's say he can't get his curveball over, so I'm, I've been. Concentrate on fastballs and changeups. When you're not able to eliminate pitches, when you have to worry about 96, 97 miles an hour fastball, curveball that he can throw for a strike and it's and it's tough to hit and a changeup, that's when it gets really, really tough on a hitter, obviously. Twins did a really, really nice job of eliminating pitches uh, with Salazar on the mound last night. The plan was to get on the fastball because the scouting report said that he wasn't getting his secondary and, and I guess you call it tertiary. There's third pitches over. Uh, so they got on the fastball early and often as we saw tougher to do against a guy like Carrasco especially when he's throwing flipping it up there at 30, 97 miles an hour and has two other pitches. One and one to Polanco. Tapper foul well in Salazar's case last night. He's on the disabled list today. He uh, came out early after throwing some pitches in the third inning, but he's been uh, complaining of some elbow soreness. He had an MRI done today, and thankfully for the Indians, it's just considered inflammation. But he only lasted two innings. It was the shortest outing of his career, and he had a cortisone shot. He'll be on the disabled list for 15 days, and then they hope he'll be ready to go and healthy. One and two to Jorge Polanco. There goes the runner. It's pitched down and away, and Perez couldn't get a grip on the baseball. So Rosario steals second base. Perez threw out a runner last night, and with the count one and two, Rosario took off and swiped second base. Curveball that Perez comes firing out. This is what catches their talk. Get, get uh, your body moving even before the ball gets up there. And he was uh, moving a little bit before he knew exactly where the ball was in his glove. A couple of things there uh, working in Paul Malda's favor. The manager thinking uh, right there, Rosario has has seen a couple of moves from Carrasco to the plate, so he ought to have an idea what to look for when he give him a key to go to second. One and two count. Chances are pretty good. He, the hitter might see a curveball, which is a better pitch to steal on. So, Paul turned him loose. Two two. And a bouncer up the line to Napoli. Steps on the bag to end the inning. Twins get a hit. Leave Rosario aboard. Last night's winner, Jose Barrios. Another. Oh, and by the way, he'll join us in the next half inning.
Cub made the start for the Twins right after his recall, his second stint with the Twins. Six innings, three earned runs. They all scored in the first inning. And at one point, he uh, set down 15 batters in a row. 99 pitches on the night, his second big league win. And Jose, nice enough to join us from the dugout. Jose, congratulations. It sure looked from up here that once you got through that first inning, you were able to relax a little bit and uh, kind of find your game on the mound. Yeah, first of all, thank you, man, for the opportunity. You know, last night with my second career win, so I'm really happy for that. And you know, on the support the, the team gave me the last night. So the first inning I got a little trouble. You know, I I lose my uh, fastball in like fast, uh, the command pitch. So they hit me a couple of hit and scored three runs. But after that, you know, I saw a couple of videos and do my adjustment and shut it down for the rest of the fifth five inning. Well, the difference in your command, as you mentioned, uh, Jose, this is Roy, th from the first inning to uh, to after that was remarkable. How would you rate? You've got four pitches, two different kind of fastballs, a curveball, and, and a changeup. How would how, how would you rate? The command that you had of of, of all of your pitches last night. Uh, I do. I, be, I build the videos and uh, the pitching coach and Santana tell me, "Hey, you open a little bit." So I try to take back with my old pitches. You know, my front leg is open a little bit early, so mm -hmm. I try to keep back and you know, do I make my pitches better? Uh, that's what I do last night. You know, you uh, mentioned uh, Santana, Irvin Santana. It's got to be a great help for someone like you to have a veteran like Santana on the staff to talk with and and have kind of a, as a teacher a separate pitching coach on the staff. Yeah, for sure. Him, Gibson, everybody here, you know, he's got good teammates. They they help me. They give me a, you know the hand. They take me my back. So every every time they they me uh, like push up. So hey, come on, you can do it. So I got that confidence and do my work out there. Two down in the second inning. The batter will be Tyler Naquin. Your next start will come uh, in St. Petersburg uh, against the uh, uh, Rays. Uh, the uh, confidence level you must have having picked up your second win, I would guess, is a little bit higher than it was when you faced the Indians on that cold, cold night at Target Field. Yeah, for sure. When they called me first time, you know, I, d I don't have care on anything that's just first time in the big league, so. I experiment every, everything, but I try to do my best work. So now I learn more, I got more compassion, and I, I can do my you know my work better. So I feel better, and the team they grow too. Hey, you uh, had uh, what four straight one, two, three innings? You came on TV with us, and we had a one, two, three inning. Nice going. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Danny Santana will lead off the third for the Twins. Santana candidate to bunt already. Jose Ramirez, the Cleveland third baseman, is in on the grass. Danny Santana, Dozier, and Maurer facing Carlos Carrasco. Danny Santana with two hits, two really good at bats last night as well. Checked with him today. Of course, he had that incident down the left field line when he went into a slide, jammed his knee into the rubberized warning track, and said today it was still sore, but everything's fine. Swing and a miss. We will go from here. After Sunday's game to St. Petersburg, where they have something even worse than a rubberized warning track, they have the painted artificial turf for the warning track. Now, you didn't spend a whole oh, really? lot of time in the outfield. No, I didn't. But I've never understood what on earth that is supposed to accomplish. That's terrible. I didn't know that. I've never been to that stadium. Two strikes to Santana. That doesn't make any sense at all. That would be dangerous. It seems to be like be dangerous. An outfielder retreating on a line driver, a fly ball. And you know, yeah, it feels like it's it's brown underneath my shoes. <laughs> One and two. Dozier and Maurer will follow. Chopper to the backstop. Twins with a winning July. Got August off on the right foot last night, hoping to go 2 0 in the early days of the month. 1 and 2. That is a foul ball. Perez reached across the left handed batter's box and caught it in foul territory. Good try by Perez bouncing out there trying to get the ball in fair territory before it went foul. And you did not get Jonathan Lucroy from Milwaukee, so they'll ride it out with Perez. Chris Jimenez in the hopes that Jan Gomes will come back and have a productive final weeks of the regular season. Inside now two and two. While the Twins are in Tampa, they hope to pass Tampa Bay and get out of the basement in the American League standings. Twins 41 and 64, Tampa Bay 42 and 62. If this team continues to play better baseball and they've now played 500 baseball over the last 60 games there are legitimately nine teams in the major leagues that they could catch and pass three in the American League and six in the National League full count that's hit to left and hit pretty well Almonte running to the gap he won't get there and one hops a wall great at bat for Danny Santana and he'll open the inning with a double. Well, you're right. Terrific at bat by uh, Danny. Fought off some pitches, took some close ones that that uh, he would not have been successful swinging at. And then he three and two got a fastball pretty much in the middle, moving away from him a little bit. He went with it, and Danny has quite a bit of life in his bat. We've seen him able to hit the ball a long way. He hits the ball in the barrel. The ball jumps pretty well. And now Dozier hit a ground ball to third his first time up. Twins have Napoli not even with the bag but 30 feet from the first base bag Pulled way over. And Dozier takes a belt high fastball strike one. Last night Brian's first at bat. Second baseman Jason Kipnis was even further behind second base than he is now. He's pulled over, but uh, he was even further to his right toward uh, toward left field. And Brian beat the beat the chef with a hard ground ball, about where Kipnis is right now. One strike. A drive to left field. This one's up. It's back and gone. A home run for Dozier. His 20th of the year. 
And the Twins go deep again in Cleveland. What a great swing on a breaking ball by Brian Dozier. Brian in an, uh, another oh by the way moment had a terrific night that he got almost no credit for but he had great at bats last night here he got a little hang and change up or curveball that didn't break or something in the middle he was had waited back let the ball get to him put a great swing on it put the tw twins up two to nothing. Twins now hitting their 125th home run of the year. They've allowed 140, but that's been a chronic issue for the Twins for a long, long time. It almost certainly won't happen this year, but the next time the Twins out homer their opponents, it'll be the first time since 2004, and that's the only time it's happened since 1991. And the Twins fans are growing. Have grown accustomed. Here's a drive to right center field, and that ball sails on Chisenhall. Maurer has an extra base hit, and he'll go to second with the third straight extra base hit. Double home run, double, and that'll bring up Kepler. Well, we talked about early uh, earlier in the open of the show. We talked about the good at bats, just time in and time out, up and down the lineup that these twin hitters. Are having in this two month streak of good offense. And here's a great at bat by Joe. Get the ball in the middle of the plate and turn on it, get the bat whistling through the, the zone. And we've seen that more and more from Joe lately, pulling the ball more now than he has all season long in, in the streak that about the last two weeks or so. Kepler tanks low. What we've seen over the last couple of weeks, Maurer's ability, willingness, intent, if you will, to pull the ball more. Another hit to right field, six hits to center. But uh, the more, of course, he can use all three outfields, the less shifting will be done against him. And that should open up more hits to left field. Inside to Kepler and it's 2 and 0. Well, Tim Launder did a great uh, piece in, in our uh, pregame show about what uh, Tom Bernanski and Joe have been working on when and the uh, the summation of uh, what Timmy talked about with uh, with Bruno is that when Joe's legs get a little tired his back sometimes gets stiff or, or hurt from diving for balls or whatever he loses his uh, leg drive and, and starts his head starts moving forward his hands get trapped behind him. And you can't pull the ball in those kind of situations. And so they work on getting his legs back underneath him, getting real, real strong in the base of his body so that his hands don't have to have extra movement. And that way he can get the big end of the bat to the ball. That's what's been, I think, according to Timmy and Bruno, and what the way we've talked to Bruno, that's that's the key for Joe. Two and one. And Kepler drives it to right field. <laughs> How about this, Kim? He's got another one. Max Kepler nearly into the second deck and it's four to nothing. Is he hot or what? You get a good hitter with a great swing and you keep throwing them fastballs down the middle and this is what happens. It's it's just really really fun to watch when a good hitter gets in a streak when he's seen the ball this well and the home run pitches keep showing up because when you're hot like this you're seeing it like this you don't miss them. And if this looks like all the, the, the three hit yesterday, <laughs> it should, because it's right there, thigh high, middle of the plate, and there is that beautiful swing. It's like they put four balls on a tee for him in the same spot. Here is Sano. But you know, the thing is, I mean, it, it, Carrasco's throwing at 95, 96, 97. And yes, it, 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 the ball does look like it's on a tee for Max right now, but you still have to hit him. You can't pop him up or foul him back. And as I said last night, that the sw his swing plane is so good it allows him not to miss pitches, to Jack get swing. to pitches better than than most guys will. One and one. Good start to the third inning. Double home run. Double home run. So no, I had to feel like the guy watching the party from. Uh, Outside a window last night. There's a big pop up near second base. 
And Kipnis back in the outfield grass with the wind pushing it back to the skin of the infield one away. Paul Mahler was talking about Kepler's home runs last night and how a couple of times he nearly caught Joe Maurer because of the nature of the home runs line drives that just barely cleared the wall. That was a no doubter. They measured that one at 441 feet. Yeah, I mean, Max didn't have to take off uh, hard from home plate on that one. He he could afford to uh, watch where that one went with pride. But you know, I started to say when Brian Dozier uh, came up to the plate, this team still goes as Brian Dozier goes. There's no question about it. When he struggled the first two months. The Twins really had a hard time scoring runs and almost simultaneously when, when uh, Brian started producing runs again the, the Twins offense uh, caught fire. We're seeing a one two punch here now with that young man Max Kepler who has the ability to uh, do the same thing that uh, and have the same impact on this team that uh, that Brian has had. Hopper to short Lindor with the play two down. Hitters sometimes talk about uh, key holding a ball looking for a pitch in a certain location. Here's the first home run last night point of contact. The second one last night little so just bit a little higher. higher right. The third one right same, in the exact same spot. spot. Yep. And tonight. Yeah. And when he gets that pitch anywhere from mid thigh high to knee high or a little below. He is just not going to miss it very very often. All fouled away. Now, of course, last night after the game, Kepler was the uh, darling of the national media. You hit three home runs in a game. You've only spent a couple months in the big league. Everybody asking you about this, and the manager says, "Hey, he's doing a great job getting backspin on the ball." Somebody asked Kepler, "said How do you get backspin on the ball?" And he goes, <laughs> "I don't know." <laughs> no, I love talking to him because those are the kind of answers, the truthful answers you get all the time when you talk with him. Well, how about his answer to Audra? Audra said, "What was going through your mind?" He goes, Is it "Nothing." Nothing. I, I, I'm better <laughs> off when nothing's going through my mind. You know, that's the old "make your mind a blank and concentrate" line. Well, it's Ken Herbeck's line: "Full mind, empty bat, or something like that." <laughs> and I believe me, that's that sounds like a yogiism, and, and it is absolutely true. Two strikes to Escobar. Stands him up. Carrasco not too um, apt to give up big innings, and the Twins have touched him for four extra base hits, four runs. The home runs he's allowed here in this inning, the 14th and 15th he's allowed this year. One and two. And Escobar skips to get out of the way. Little purpose pitch right there. Just Carrasco uh, let the Twins hitters know that they don't get to just sit and uh, look for fastballs and tee off on them. But the truth of the matter is, we talked a, a little bit earlier about how hitters will try to eliminate pitches. And as good as Carrasco's curveball was the first couple innings, the Twins have just kind of spit on that, look for fastballs, and hit them when they got them. And now Escobar into short center. Kipnis back makes the catch. And Carrasco gets the last three batters, but before that, Santana doubled, Dozier homer, Bauer doubled, and Max Kepler hit his fourth home run of this series.
they continue their respective torrid home run paces. And the Twins have jumped out in front here 4 0. And now an early bulge for Kyle Gibson. Four run lead. He'll face El Monte, Perez, Santana. El Monte didn't play the first half of the year because of his. 80 game of PED suspension. Strike one. And also kind of lost in the uh, translation here uh, today is how well Kyle Gibson all of a sudden found that uh, sinking fastball in a tough situation the first inning. Got Napoli to ground in a double play with two guys on. Looked like the game could get away from Kyle right away. Was able to get a, a good sinker to Napoli, get a ground ball, 5 4 3 double play, and then have a terrific. Inning of command in the second inning. Now he's got four runs to work with. See if he can continue that command because he sure found it in a hurry. And, and good for him. Good pitching and to end the first and to get through the second. Two and one to Almonte. Yeah, the three outs in the second inning reached two hoppers to the right side of the right. infield and classic Gibson mm -hmm. pitches. Mm -hmm. Gibson gave up a season high 10 hits in his only start. Against Cleveland a couple weeks ago at Target Field. Two and two. Saw it from Barrios last night. We've certainly seen it from Gibson. Difficulty in the first or second inning. And then, provided the damage that was done wasn't too severe, he gets into a groove and he strikes out Almonte. For the first out of the third inning. Good change up there. Join us on Monday, September 5th against the Royals for Eduardo Escobar and Friends Labor Day celebration benefiting Venezuelan youth. Special ticket package includes tickets on the Budweiser roof deck, a post game meet and greet with Eduardo Escobar and other Twins players, and more. You can learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash Escobar or call 833 Twins. Now it says uh, other Twins players. Along with Eduardo Escobar, and I have no idea, but my guess is that if Escobar asks any of his teammates to make an appearance with him for his charitable function, there's a real good chance they'll be there. He is maybe the most popular twin <laughs> to have been a part of this organization over the last four or five years. Well, I will tell you the first answer they give will be no. He will walk up and ask them, and they'll all say, "No, get out of here! They're not, not doing it." For and then you. they'll and, smile. And, and yeah, and they'll and they'll gripe at him for him asking <laughs> them to do it, and they'll give him all kinds of grief. And then you're He'll right; they will all show yeah. up. Check swing and a strike, and Perez has gone very quickly. Two down, six in a row sent down by Gibson. And another good changeup, and the reason why that changeup is working is because uh, Kyle has is commanding the fastball again. So he shows him the fastball. Fastball's got good movement. It puts that in the hitter's mind, and then he can get him on the on the changeup. But he can't lose sight of the fact, as good as his changeup is, he can't lose sight of the fact that it's the fastball that sets up that changeup for a hitter. Santana singled to right field. Was left at second base in the first inning. And Dozier with a nice reach to his left and another quick inning for Gibson. He set down seven in a row and has a four nothing lead.
Max Kepler's got a very good swing. Notice the uh, swing here, and I put some uh, lines in here. To the, the vertical line, look where his hands are as they go to the, to the ball, and look at the, the uh, diagonal line that shows the big end of the bat coming right with his hands. There's no loop there. And what that does is drop the big end right into square to the line of flight of the ball. So it is coming right down the line of flight. That's what we call swing plane. You see where his head is, it's down, and his front underneath arm is getting extended. His head's right over his back knee. That's perfect. And that's what resu results in that big extension that hits the ball 440 feet with an effortless looking swing. Now that might help explain to me and our viewers two things I've always uh, heard about hitting that seem contradictory to me. Everybody wants bat speed. Everybody, that's how you propel the baseball with right. bat speed. That's, that's how you exactly hit it a long is. way and, and yep. you know the exit velocity, all of that with bat speed. On one to Rosario, and just outside. But yet, you know we're told that some hitters keep the bat in the hitting zone a long time and it almost seems like well you can do one <laughs> but you, you shouldn't be able to do the other if you're trying to you know increase bat speed then how do you keep the bat in the hitting zone a long, a time? long time it's a little bit of a uh, of a misrepresentation what keeping the bat head in the in the hitting zone a long time really should we should say that the bat head Stays square to the line of flight, uh, the line of flight of the ball a long time, uh, it, and uh, not that it stays in any one spot. It just stays square to the line of flight of the ball. And we saw that on on the Kepler drawings when his hand when his hands swing at the ball. And remember, we're talking about hand-eye coordination, which is a funny way to think about it you know, to say it because really what you try to hit the hit the ball with is not your hands, but something that's two feet out of you know away from your hands, right? <laughs> So when your hands start to swing at the ball, the big end of the bat better be coming with them. And, and uh, so many guys are uh, loopy, and the, and the bat hit is kind of in and then back out of the line of flight of the ball. But as we saw with Kepler's swing, when he swings, the bat head gets down into square line of flight of the ball and then whips right down that line. So it doesn't slow down. It's so not it's like it stays there a lot. It just swing, becomes right. the big end of the bat right. becomes horizontal early and, and stays there throughout the swing. Two and two. And a drive to right field. Chisenhall is there to catch the line drive. One away. And that'll bring up Polanco. I always thought Chuck Knobloch had maybe the flattest that swing plane, the word that you and Tim Lauder used, had a great swing plane. And he started low with his bat low and flat, flat. Yep. and then he would swing it through and mm -hmm. and uh, must have kept the bat in the hitting zone a long time when he was hitting well over 300. E exactly right. And, and uh, Wade Boggs was may maybe the, the best. Tony Gwynn. Uh, Mr. Carew. Uh, you know, Rod Carew, uh, all those guys. They're, they're, the bat head got square to the line of flight of the ball and went right back through the ball. That's Polanco taking a strike over the inside corner. He tapped out to first his first time up. He's getting a pair of two run home runs. They've had five two run home runs in this series four of them by Max Kepler. Joe Maurer is going to lead the league and run score by the time <laughs> Kepler's done this year. Every time he gets on base, Kepler hits a two-run home run. Well, and that's the idea with Joe, right? I mean, his on-base percentage has always been terrific and, and uh, continues to be so. And the Twins just looking for guys that will uh, push him around the bases. Inside, one and two. Van Bowers uh, starting to close in on. Brian Dozier a little bit on the run score department. Dozier scoring, of course, on his home run. He scored 59 runs. Maurer scored 54. Drill to the right field corner, and the Twins are stinging the ball hard again here tonight. Polanco digs for second, and he's in with the fifth extra base hit for the Twins tonight against Carrasco. Talked about Jorge Polanco last night. It, it, this guy knows about the bat I and mean, he just does he goes up there to get a ball in the middle of the plate and then talk about the bat head whistling through the zone he keeps his head so still and then just fires the big end of the bat at it a very aggressive mentality with a bat in his hands and it's going to be very interesting to to see what the twins do with Jorge Polanco because I 
I think here's another young man that's just going to hit and hit and hit until they force it. They force the Twins to play him somewhere on an everyday basis. And it's going to be interesting to see where that is. Santana swings and misses. It was Santana's wonderful at bat, resulting in a leadoff double that triggered the four run third inning. You know, I asked Paul Molitor before the game today, you know, and he's been around the Twins organization for a long time. Coach, now the manager. Could he remember a game where the Twins hit so many balls hard last night, 19 hits, and there wasn't a, a flare in the group, right. even the couple of ground ball hits, but they were hit sharply. And he said, and then he rattled off, you know, five or six outs that were recorded right. uh, on line drives, like the one that uh, Rosario hit to start this inning. Two strikes to Santana. And a base hit to left field. Polanco will be held at third. And Santana with a pair of hits. Going the, to the opposite field to pick up a single here, sending Polanco to third. He hit the same exact pitch in the same exact spot last night for his second hit of the ball game last night. And when Danny Santana is is doing that, you know that he his mechanics are really really good. You see him wait on that breaking ball, outside a little bit, and just slap it over there to the, uh, the left side. That's that's really classic Danny Santana the when he's swinging the bat uh, well. Suggested before the first pitch that Twins got 19 hits last night. They settled for nine or ten tonight. They've already got seven, five extra base hits. Brian Dozier's about to step in uh, to the box now, and and lost in the shuffle last night was the fact that Brian hit a line drive out to left field. He hit a ball to the right field uh, fence that Lonnie Chisnall crashed into the fence and and uh, and caught. It. Prevented Brian from getting a double or a triple, and he made two spectacular defensive plays. One of them, I think, probably saved Jose Barrios's night. Dozier takes up and in. So you're talking. You talked about Kepler getting the three home runs, and so many guys having oh by the ways. This was the right. Brian Dozier's night last night was the maybe the worst oh by the way because he didn't have much to show for how well he what a, what a great game he had last night. That catch he made on the pop fly. Uh, with, with Barrios in trouble in center field was terrific. And another one up and in. Let's uh, remind you that you know, last night it was Danny Salazar, and although he was put on the disabled list, nothing structurally uh, wrong with Salazar. And now Carrasco, as tough as they come in the American League, Opponent batting average at 205, and the Twins are seven for 17 against him. There's a strike, two and one. And yet, last night, as comfortable as the win was, there were a couple of situations like this that the Twins didn't convert. Runner at third, less than two out. We'll see what Dozier can do to make sure that at least Polanco scores this inning. Runner goes and the pitch chopped left side. A run will score Dozier on a pitch that was up. Somehow managed to get on top of it and chop it for an RBI ground out. Santana advances to second. Well, I don't know that that was necessarily a uh, hit and run uh, with uh, runner on third base. Uh, uh, the runner on first base taken off in a in a classic hit and run. I think it was more of a straight steal. I think it influenced Brian a little bit when he knows the guy's running. I, if I just put the ball in play, we're, we're going to get a run in. So. <laughs> Brian swung at that pitch and he was trying to knock down some apples. <laughs> Mauer scoring on the Kepler home run. He's passed another pretty good left handed hitter, Tony Oliva, in the Twins run scored department. And if they continue to line up Kepler behind him, he might pass Ken Herbert. One strike. And now a ball. Lauer doubled to right center field. And the most
most wonderful thing has happened as teams update their hitting charts. Look where the Indians are playing them almost straight up in the outfield. The left fielder isn't standing in the left field corner. He's standing where a left fielder should be. Naquin, who we've seen uh, over the uh, summer playing a, always a very shallow center field. There's a ball dribbled up the line. And Chisholm Hall playing about where you'd expect a right fielder to play. Carsoup.com trivia question who holds the Twins record for most career four hit games? Well, I got a couple of guys in mind. I played with each of them. It's got to be Rodney, doesn't it? Yeah, or Puck. One and two. I think Puck's got the most six for six games. Low. Was it Rennie Stennett went seven for seven? Yeah, or nine for nine or something <laughs> like that. Yep. yep. Kepler on deck. And Maurer would love to produce here in the fourth inning. Against Andrew Miller last night, got a breaking ball and lifted it over the wall in right. One of five home runs hit last night. Two and two. Just off the outside edge. Close pitch. Three and two. Hey, look at Carrasco. He's thrown 83 pitches tonight. Yeah, the Twins have taken all the sting out of that fastball. He, the, we know he had great velocity. He started throwing at 97, 98 miles an hour in the first inning, down to 92 or 93, and throwing changeups. Twins have really, really attacked him. Full count to Maurer. And a drive to left center and deep. Maurer sending one up and off the wall. It'll be another double. And scoring from second is Santana, and it is six to nothing. Now last night the Twins knocked Salazar out in the third inning, but there were some warning signs with Salazar struggling throughout the month of July. Turns out he was hurt a little bit. There have been no warning signs about Carlos Carrasco. The Twins are just beating him up. High fastball, not a pitch that Joe would, I think, would say was his favorite pitch. But with two strikes, he goes the other way and, and puts a charge in it. High off the uh, left field wall. Quick trip to the mound. And Mickey Calloway out there to try to settle down Carrasco a little bit. And so Kepler will have his chance here in the fourth inning. He's already hit four home runs in the series. And line drives. All four times. <laughs> Lasers all four times. It, I mean, they are balls that uh, you know, a lot of normal uh, guys, well, he's not even going to get a chance. And, and this makes all the sense in the world. I mean, why, why pitch to him here? But those are balls that look like line drive one hoppers off the fence, not, uh, not back in the sixth, seventh, eighth, fifteenth row. And Kempler tonight. An unintentional walk, a two run home run, an intentional walk. 25 walks. Now, this is his third intentional walk. And Sano will have a chance with Dan Otero getting loose in the Cleveland bullpen. My goodness, the Indians didn't get an out from Salazar in the third inning last night. And now Carrasco's grasp on this game in the fourth inning is. Tenuous. So no for two, a fly ball to center and a pop up to second. At the plate for the Twins, the designated hitter, Miguel Sano. Four doubles, two home runs for the Twins, a couple of singles mixed in as well. Carrasco gave up. 11 runs in five starts in July. 
11 and the Twins have scored six against him tonight. And Sano gets a breaking ball and a swing and a miss. Pitch. Same swing, same result. 0 and 2. Got to believe they're going to go out there again with that same pitch. Off the plate with a fastball. Just seems like Sano, you no, know, he drilled a double the other day at home against uh, the White Sox. But he's swinging a lot of pitches he can't hit and taking a lot of pitches he can. Well, I, I, I really do believe that the uh, the out pitch is going to be that slider that he, he swung and missed. Oh, he had drilled to left center field on a line and off the wall. It'll score two more, and Sano joins the extra base hit parade. Eight runs against Carlos Carrasco. Well, good for Miguel Sano. He got a hanger and didn't miss that one after uh, looking fastball, trying to pull two sliders in a row to go 0 and 2. It just looked like any other slider down was going to get him. But you see where this ball is. He, just a hanging slider right in the middle of the plate. Sano put a charge in that one. That's the one you're supposed to hit. And he did it. Last night the Twins knocked out all star starter Danny Salazar in the third inning tonight they knock out Carlos Carrasco in the fourth. of extra base hits again here tonight and this is coming into play today since June 25th the twins have led the major leagues in runs scored they have the highest slugging percentage second in home runs they've added two more tonight and tonight they have added nine hits seven of them extra base hits and Miguel Sano who didn't play last night finally joins the fun with a two run double knocking out Carrasco and none of those ranks are going down I'll tell you that right now after tonight. Here is Suzuki down and away ball one Dan Otero is the first man out of the Cleveland bullpen now Indians had to pitch most of the game last night with relief pitchers because Salazar was knocked out without retiring a batter in the third.
Popped up short right. So the ball drifting. And Chisholm all back a couple of steps makes the catch. 32 pitches in the inning. And the Twins cracked three of them for doubles and scored four more runs. is presented by Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. What's yours? Last night was Danny Salazar's shortest start of his career and tonight Carlos Carrasco knocked out on the fourth having given up a career high eight earned runs. Kipnis will lead off for the Indians and he takes ball one. Kipnis, Lindor, and Napoli facing Gibson, who set down seven men in a row. And now missing outside again. Kipnis hit a liner to Santana for the first out of the first inning when the Indians did have a threat going, and now Gibson misses down and in 3 0. Santana singled, Kipnis lined out, Lindor singled, and then very early on a key at bat and Napoli got or Gibson got Napoli to bounce into an inning ending double play. And the Indians haven't had a base runner since. Here's where Kyle Gibson has just got to really trust the movement on his fastball. He's got a good sinker and we've seen all the ground balls he's thrown already. Just trust that movement throw it low in the strike zone let the guys swing the bat. Now three and two to kill him or two. Uh, Kipnis rather. Four runs in the third, four runs in the fourth. And Gibson wearing number 44. In all the four run innings, the twins score for him. And there's a walk. Kipnis is aboard, leading off the fourth inning. Twins fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app, take Fox Sports North and Twins Baseball with you wherever you go. Lindor with a single his first time up. Well, it's remarkable the Indians are. Very likely, I think, headed for the playoffs. Rangers actually have the best record in the American League now by a couple of percentage points. But the Indians have gone 34 and 19 in their last 53 ball games. And both the Indians and Twins have very young third place hitters tonight. Lindor looks very comfortable, very productive as the 
Cleveland third place hitter. There's a strike. And uh, Max Kepler on the other side, I'd say he's feeling pretty comfortable with the plate <laughs> these days, too. I would say so. One and one to Lindor. The walk to Kipnis to start the fourth inning with eight nothing lead is uh, not what Kyle Gibson wanted to do. Fell behind Lindor, did get back even in the count, but there's a good example right there. Inexplicably, Kyle Gibson will lose command of his fastball. And not just, I want to throw it inside and can't or outside. I mean, just lose the ability to throw his fastball for a strike. And, and when that just that one thing changes for him, he's going to be a 15 or 16 game winner. And the base hit up the middle. Just the second, he'll hold up there. First and second, nobody out, and the dangerous Napoli coming to the play. But for some reason, and I don't, I don't, I confess, I don't know at all what the reason is. But Kyle's got really good stuff. He's got a really good uh, uh, brain in terms of wanting to uh, be a frontline starter. He's a tough kid out there in terms of competing. Every once in a while, he just loses the ability to throw his fastball for a strike. And it, 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 to use an old term, one of my teammates say, "You got to quit that. <laughs> you, just, you just got to quit that. See if you can quit that. <laughs> See if you can get Napoli to hit it on the ground at somebody again, like he did in the first. Big pop up, and on one pitch, Napoli should be retired. Infield fly rule should be called, and finally they do call it one away. We've seen Napoli hit the ball that high before, but usually it's gone out about 300 more feet." One down, and that'll bring up Ramirez. Well, that's a big out right there. Kyle got away with one, kind of a high fastball. When his fastball is up in the zone, it doesn't it doesn't sink. But Napoli got under it, popped it up, just missed it. When you see a ball hit that high to the uh, batter's pull field, he he just missed that. Just got under it a little bit. Now see if Kyle can come back and get a ground ball, a double play ball here. On the outside corner, strike one. That should help. Get ahead of the hit. Yep, change up gets ahead. And now two strikes. What we've seen in the past from Kyle when he loses that fastball control gets himself in trouble like he has done this inning then the game will just absolutely get away from him. what's really changed for him this year is that he's battled back like he's doing this inning. let's see if he can get a ground ball but he's battled back and found it found a way to get the ball get his mechanics back get do something to get the ball back in the strike zone and get some big outs like he did in the first inning on that double play ground ball that he induced from Napoli. So he loses command a little bit here in the fourth. He gets Napoli, gets ahead of Rivera, see if he can finish him off here. Fly ball, center field. Rosario with the catch and a couple of fly ball outs, two down. September 9th is University of St. Thomas Night at Target Field. A limited number of St. Thomas theme night ticket packages are available that include a game ticket and purple and gray twins cap. Learn more at twinsbaseball.com slash St. Thomas or call 833 twins. Since the last out was caught by Rosario, I checked with him today and the ball that kicked off his glove, the line drive, he said, yeah, it was knuckling out there and really yeah. sailed at the last yep, instant. You can tell. It's a tough error, but really was hit so hard and you know, a spin on it. There's a strike on the outside corner to Chisholm Hall. Kyle Gibson using his changeup to get strike one on these uh, on these hitters. It's been an effective pitch for him. Gibson hoping to wrap up the fourth inning in the neighborhood of 50 pitches thrown. One and one. You see the movement on that on the pitch right there. That's his that's his sinking fastball, the two seam fastball that moves down and away. 
and what Paul Molitor really wants to see uh, Gibson do is throw with that much movement, throw it more for the middle of the plate rather than the corner. Breaking ball off the plate. When you have that kind of movement, it's tougher to hit than a uh, straight fastball that's even five, six, seven miles an hour faster, as we saw from the Twins hitters teeing off on some very good Carrasco fastballs. You have the kind of movement that Gibson does. Throwing for the outside corner, having it move off the plate, doesn't do you much good. Fly ball, center field. There's a, a good job by Gibson. Rosario with the catch. He makes the catch. Three fly ball outs get Gibson out of the jam. Bring your circle me signs, and if you get circled, you may find yourself in the Minnesota Lottery winner circle where you could win $100 worth of lottery scratch off tickets courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. Escobar, Rosario, and Polanco will hit in the fifth against Dan Otero. Side 2 0. Oh. Mentioned earlier the Twins uh, still with just 41 wins on the year, but they have the opportunity. To catch a whole bunch of teams if they continue to play well for the next couple of months. They already have a better record than Atlanta. The ball hit on the ground. Kipnis is there. Blown away. But in the American League, they are just a game and a half behind Tampa, and they go to St. Petersburg to play three this weekend. The Angels and A's each have just 47 wins, so you know the way the graphs are lining up, the Twins can pass one or both of those teams in the National League. Already got a better record than the Braves. The Phillies have 48 wins. In the National League Central, the Reds have 42. The Brewers have 47. And in the West, Arizona has 43. San Diego, 46 wins. So it's not going to put a, you know, a wonderful taste in everybody's mouth to still be finish, you know, finishing with a losing record, whatever it's going to be. But I don't know. At this point of the season, it's something to play for to try to move past. Some of the other 29 teams and just play good baseball the last two months. Well, I've got the Royals in, our, in my sights. Do you really? We're only nine games behind the Royals. The worst thing, really crazy, crazy way crazier things have happened than making yeah. nine games with two months to go. Two and out to Rosario. Rosario with a single, a stolen base, then he lined out to start the fourth inning. Foul over the tarp. Mm -hmm. 
Rosario getting a chance to play center field. Byron Buxton is here. Twins wanted to give him at least one more day off. Thankfully, nothing structurally wrong with his knee. Told me today that he actually felt something, some stiffness in his knee before the game started. Just thought it would loosen up as he was uh, running around. Uh, on the bases, hopefully in the outfield, and he took off in a stolen base attempt, and he felt something click, and didn't want to go down into a slide. Inside, it's the second time he's had that knee looked at because of collisions with the outfield wall. You look at him, and he that uh, left arm has uh, uh, tattoos on it. The right arm is all scarred up from the chain link fence in. Uh, Right or left center field at Target Field, and he's got a fresh set of scars on the shoulder. Here's uh, what happened on Sunday. He went into second, and instead of sliding, you could see uh, Carlos Sanchez, and then it really started bothering Buxton. He was just able to get barely to third base and ended up coming out of the game. Two down, Polanco will bat. He told me the same thing today as I watched. Uh, him and uh, Bruno do some uh, extra hitting in the cages, uh, cage underneath the stadium here. He said that something, he felt something when he was when he was running, not not because he didn't slide. I was actually glad that glad to hear that. I was going to be really disappointed if he, for some reason, didn't slide in the second on that and hurt himself right. that way. That would have been really, really unfortunate. One and one to Polanco, one out double in the fourth. And started a four run inning in terms of a pair of four run innings here tonight. And they knocked out Carlos Carrasco. So speaking of that non slide in the second even though that wasn't the uh, reason for uh, Byron to get hurt for all you young players out there. Ball driven into the corner again. Rocket. It'll be another extra base hit. With Polanco digging for second. And the twins are piling up the doubles here tonight. Polanco with his fifth line drive in six or seven at bats in these two games. And again, he did throw this ball no over the plate to Jorge Polanco, and I mean he has no interest in going up there to do anything else but this. He's he just is up there to swing the bat and hit the ball hard, and he believes he's going to do that when he walks up there. Six doubles for the Twins, 195 on the season. Only the Boston Red Sox have more doubles than the Twins, and they've got 238. Here's Santana, a double and a single, two runs scored. And he tried to hit the third home run of the game for the Twins. So I'm going to quickly finish my tutorial for all the young player, baseball players out there. Anytime you go into a base hard slide, just slide. It, except it, first base. Well, right, except first base when, when you can run by. But if you're going into a base uh, you, with any kind of speed at all, just just slide. There's no downside. And now sliding isn't as easy as it used to be because now you don't dare disengage the base, whether it's a head first slide, a feet first slide. You've got to stay in contact with the base at all times with replay. Which I think is terrible. I really, really disagree with that. 0 oh and 2 to Santana. You disagree not with my statement, but with. I don't disagree with your statement. That's absolutely true. You have okay. to stay in contact with the base the, the, the whole time. But I think, you know, in the, when we talk about the spirit of the rules, or the spirit of the game, I mean, if you. It's one thing if you overslide the base or if you drastically come off the base. But this looking at slow motion replay is with wild pitch by Otero. And, Polanco will go to third. As we look at super slow motion replay, where a player runs in, the, slides in the base hard, hits the base with his foot, comes up off the base, and just for one microsecond is off the. For some reason, as he's getting his balances, he's off the base. And the fielder has kept the tag, the, the glove on the whole time, and he's called out. I just think that's not the spirit of the game. Another foul by Santana. He had an at bat like this in the third inning, and he ended up cracking a double. And by the innings end, the Twins had four runs. Two and two. 
10 hits for the Twins, just three for Cleveland. And another foul ball. Used five, or excuse me, the Indians used five relief pitchers last night. Terrell, the first out of the shoot tonight. And to right center field, Chisenhall makes a running catch to end the inning. Another double, Polanco left at third. It's eight to nothing. Fans of the game enjoying the proceedings to say the least. With 19 hits, rockets all over progressive field. More of the same tonight. Twins with an 8 0 lead. They had a four run third inning, a four run fourth inning. And now Kyle Gibson, who's given up three singles and a walk, will pitch to the bottom third of the Cleveland lineup in the fifth. Just outside, ball one. Naquin had a great spring training. Hit with power, made the team at the expense of, among others, Robbie Grossman, who was in camp with the Cleveland Indians. And then Grossman wanted to find a different home at the end of spring training. The Indians talked him into staying until the middle of May. Here's the ball hit sharply, backhanded by Escobar. He sent some fires one away. And eventually, of course, Grossman ended up. With the twins. Run or skate in the RBC Race for the Kids Minnesota Half Marathon and 6K, benefiting Ronald McDonald House Charities Upper Midwest this Saturday. For more details, visit foxsportsnorth.com and click on upcoming events. One gone in the fifth, another ground ball out. Here is Almonte. And then Almonte's situation late in spring training, he was suspended. There was a ball past a diving mower and toward the right field corner. Kepler will spin and fire, but Almonte has a double. Well, Gibson has been trying to get ahead here for several hitters with changeups on first ball pitch. That one he threw up around Almonte's eyes almost, about stomach high, maybe chest high changeup. And those aren't very effective. Roberto Perez catching his second straight game. He has two hits in 40 at bats. Excuse me, 30 at bats. Swing and a miss. 
I was stunned. I was surprised that Jonathan Lucroy used his uh, no trade clause to uh, stay in Milwaukee, albeit temporarily. I was stunned that the Indians didn't have a, a backup plan. They're not going to get Jan Gomes back for a month at the earliest. Swinging a foul. And Gomes, before he got hurt, wasn't swinging the bat very well. And I'm thrilled to death, Dirt Suzuki still with the Twins, but I thought Suzuki would be a natural fit for the Indians who didn't really want to commit to a long term deal for a catcher because they've got long term commitments to Gomes. Two strikes. Just oh, missed. Man, where was that going? Suzuki held it, but C.B. Buckner didn't call it. One and two. Yeah, that could be called a strike, and in, in, in my view, it, you know, as much as I like hitting and not pitching, that, that hitter's need, hitter needs to be called out for not trying to offer that pitch. And now missing inside, two and two. Well, what made me laugh about the Luke Roy situation is then he went to Texas, the Texas Rangers, who play in Arlington between Dallas and Fort Worth. I read the paper today that it was much better because it's closer to his home in Houston. Well. I mean, that's like saying he went to he went to Cleveland because it's closer to Detroit. I mean, Houston to Dallas, Texas is a big place. Dozier with the field uh, of the second hop, throwing to retire Perez, and on the play, Almonte goes to third. Well, the Indians made their big move getting Andrew Miller, but the Rangers lineup just got a lot deeper with the acquisitions they made: Beltron and Luke Roy. The Indians appear, at least in the short term, to have a major hole in their lineup with their catchers. Chris Jimenez hitting a little over 200, but he's a journeyman catcher, known more for his defense than his offense. Santana, the batter, single in two trips. Monte with a walking lead off third. Ball one. Well, we've seen with the Twins when you're able to extend your uh, lineup a little bit, uh, even by one or two players, just extend the ability for someone to get a big, uh, a big hit by a player or two. It makes a gigantic difference in how you're able to score runs. That's hit a ton. Santana gets the Indians on the board with a long run, run. and it's eight to two. Paint measure shot for Carlos Santana and the Indians are on the board. Well, Kyle got behind and then with an eight-run lead, just wanted to come in and get a strike, I guess, and threw him a high fastball right in the middle of the plate. Santana looking for it. And he can do this. He can hit the ball out of the ballpark when he gets a fastball he likes. Ball was crushed. And now here's Kipnis with the bases empty and two down. And a breaking ball shaving the outside corner. Kipnis with a liner to left and a walk in the fourth inning. Just missed the corner. Just not the best fastball command that Kyle Gibson has ever had. And his big league career just really struggling. He's pitching well with his other pitches, pitching around it. There's a nice changeup. And the hand comes Mauer and goes into right field. Kipnis reaches and Lindor will back. Well, the Indians do this in the ball game yesterday early with a two out threat. The Rios got the first two guys, and then before the third out could be recorded, they put three runs up on the board. Base hit for Kipnis, and that'll bring up Lindor. Lindor with two singles already against Gibson. Joe Mauer has been playing some really outstanding first base for the Twins for uh, all season long, really. But he just keeps getting better and better. That ground ball ate him up a little bit. He was hit hard enough to, for him not to be able to get any 
kind of read on a hop, and the, and the last hop just kind of ate him up. And there goes Kipnis, yeah, and uh, he no goes chance. in with a slide, even though the Twins let him go to second. So now Lindor with a man in scoring position, and Lindor is seven for nine against Kyle Gibson, counting his two singles here tonight. One strike. One and one. And a big man to get because Napoli, with 25 home runs, is in the on deck circle. One and one to Lindor. And a breaking ball lifted foul over the Cleveland dugout. up over for a look is Polanco and no play five rows back if you care Colonel Santana's home run measured at 436 feet Seventieth pitch of the night for Gibson, hoping to be it'll be the final pitch of the fifth inning. That's poked down the line, down for a hit. It'll score a run. Lindor with another two-out hit, and incredibly, he's eight for ten against Kyle Gibson, and it's eight to three. Started with a one out double. Perez was retired and now home run single single. And a high, another high change up. A ball was moving away out over the plate, almost on the corner. But again, that change up not in the location height wise that Kyle Gibson wanted. And when you don't have command of your fastball, you're trying to get by with breaking ball and change up. It's always, you almost can't throw enough of them in, in the right spots to. To get by when guys know you're really struggling with your fastball, it really hamstrings a pitcher. Well, Gibson, tempting fate here. He's faced Napoli two prior times, each time with runners at first and second. He's gotten them each time. But now a man aboard, two out. Well, he needs to keep an eye on Lindor here. And close play. They nearly picked him off. The steals against Gibson have come in a flurry in his last few starts. He's been really good about holding runners. Kipnis just took off right away and stole second without a throw, and it ended up costing the Twins a run. Ooh. Suzuki called for a pitch out, and Gibson nearly threw a strike. The runner didn't go, and now Suzuki. Very dangerous for a catcher right here. He, he's totally exposed, and the ball is could have been fouled off. Well, it could have been hit for a home run. Could anything could have happened? Could have been called for a strike <laughs> right at the knees. Might be the best fastball he's thrown this inning. No, it's right down the middle. One and zero. Oh. That time they go oh, safe. Manny Gonzalez hesitated a little bit. Paul Molitor has a foot out of the dugout. The Twins are going to take a look at this. Gibson has one pickoff. And he might have a second one here in the fifth inning. Well, he's very quick to first for a right hander. We'll see. No, he got back. Looks like he just got back. His job here is to keep the ball in the ballpark. 
Just keep the ball in the ballpark. Thought one of us was going to have to catch that. Yeah, that was coming back towards us. One and one. Gibson got into a bit of a mess in the fourth and Emmett got, got out of it with three fly ball outs. His two outs here in the fifth have been on ground balls. And Gore almost fell off the base. We've seen Herbeck, or excuse me, Maurer do the Kent Herbeck couch potato pickup. He should have done the old Ron Gant pickup there. <laughs> That's just such a dangerous at bat right now as we should look at uh, Joe Vavra on the uh, phone out to the bullpen. Doesn't look like anybody's picking up out there. I'm looking at the pickoff here, no? I thought he was calling the bullpen. He was looking at that last one. Oh. Well, as I started to say, it's such a dangerous at, at bat. Napoli's got three pitches that he just missed in three at bats here. One and one. And you just you just hate to continue to attempt fate. Home run hitter gets three home run pitches. He's, he's popped two of them up and just fouled one back in, th in three at bats. Got to make a good pitch here. Keep the ball in, in, in the infield. Oh. There it goes. My goodness. Almost to the scoreboard, and it's a five run inning for Cleveland. And the Indians are right back in the game. That's one of the longest home runs I've ever seen hit here. That's one of the longest home runs I've ever seen hit, anyway. After the second out, the Indians go home run, single, single home run. And you watch where this pitch is high fastball. And this ball is absolutely hammered. I, I don't have a word to describe how he hit this ball. Crushed, I guess. Look where it lands. Now outside to Ramirez. Twins have a pair of four run innings, but now the Indians have a five spot in the fifth. Swing and a miss. Again, one and two. Well, Napoli can take the uh, suspense out of a home run, can't it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Blocked by Suzuki, two and two. And you see Kyle with just absolutely no confidence in his fastball at all. All these pitches now change ups and curveballs to Ramirez. Two and two. And a base hit to right. And the inning continues. The Indians have up. battered around here, and Gibson handed an eight nothing lead. Might not get a chance to finish the fifth inning. One more out to get to at least qualify for a win. And the batter will be Lonnie Chisenholm. Chisenhall 0 for 2 tonight, 5 for 17 against Gibson. They measure Napoli's home run at 454 feet. So after the second out, Indians have hit 890 feet worth of home runs. I think they're cheating Napoli on that distance. Down and in, ball one. Hey, if Chisenhall reaches here, Naquin will come up representing the tying run. Strike one and one. Gibson taking a shutout into this fifth inning, and now he's hanging on by his fingernails. 
Deep to right center field. Kepler back and over. Off the wall. A quick retrieve. Throw to second base. The Indians get another run. And it's 8 to 6. Chisenhall nearly cleared the wall in right center field. And Ramirez scores from first. And another change up there. He went curveball change up to Chisenhall. And, and, and the problem is that the other hitters, the Indian hitters are sitting out there knowing he, he just has no confidence, no ability to throw a, a fastball anywhere near where he wants to. Chisenhall gets the change up, gets the extension on it. Kepler actually plays it very, very well. If the Twins had been set up for a relay to the plate, they might have had a chance for a play at the plate. Very disappointing and disturbing fifth inning for Kyle Gibson sailing along through four innings. And he's given back most of what was an eight run lead. He's got three or four runs for him in the third four more in the fourth and he was cruising along he got the opening guy here in the fifth inning and before Gibson could get the third out the Indians battered around their back in the game and here's Michael Tonka. You see Tonka's numbers he's gotten better and better as the uh, year and his number of appearances uh, have uh, gone on. Got to the point where we know he throws hard. He's been much, much better command throwing strikes with that fastball and looks into the breaking ball every once in a while. So we'll see if we can, if uh, he can restore order here, get the third out of this inning, get the Twins back up there swinging the bats again. A one out double, and then after the second out, home run, single, single, home run, single, double. So six straight two out hits. The Indians obviously back in the game. Here's Naquin who started the inning with a two hopper to Escobar. Of course he represents the tying run and he does have power. He's hit a dozen this year. A dozen home runs. Strike one. Anticipating fastball, he got it, but he couldn't catch up with it. Good fastball, 95 miles an hour in a great spot, right in under his hands. Naquin, like most hitters, left hand hitters, a better low ball hitter than high. 0 oh 2. He threw it in a great spot. The foul, a 95 mile per hour fastball. Two and 
two. Been a long time since the second out. The Indians have racked up six hits and have scored six runs. And Suzuki. Keeps calling and Tonkin keeps throwing that mid 90s fastball. That's his power pitch. Much more confidence in the fastball, both in the stuff and the ability to throw it in a good spot than he does with the breaking ball. Two and two. Full count, El Monte on deck. Hits are even suddenly. Ten apiece. And Indians with seven of them here in the fifth. And he walked him. And Almonte come up, will come up with the tying run at first. Monte hit a hot ground ball just out of Mauer's reach into the right field corner. That started this mess. He is the 11th man to bat. Monte is switch hitter. Just 39 at bats, but statistically he's been a better hitter right handed than left. Again, his double started this inning. Getting ahead of Almonte with a fastball. Nine pitches for Tonkin. All of them 94, 95 miles per hour. That's a nice dig by Suzuki. If that ball gets to the backstop, the tying run is in scoring position. First breaking ball he's thrown. You see, he overthrew it a little bit. Uh, he overthrew it a lot. And that's what I was saying. You know, just the, uh, the confidence in, in his fastball over his breaking ball. One and two. See Tonkin go from uh, throwing hard and not having great strike zone command to now finding the strike zone regularly with his fastball. That's the pitch right there. He needs to, if he can find the same confidence in that pitch and his ability to throw it in a good spot as he does now with his fastball, then he'll really have something. Pretty good take by Almonte. Yeah, here. really good take. Actually, left hand hitter getting the fastball thrown by him and for him to not get out in front of that one. Pretty good take. Two and two. Finally, the inning ends with the Twins in front, eight to six.
inning and the Twins lead by a pair of runs now just eight to six and you can see what Dozier's done since 2014. First among second baseman in home runs extra base hit second and run scored fourth and runs batted in. Got off to a terrible start this year but he's unlike the kind of mirror opposite maybe of last year when he had a great first half and a poor second half. Brian getting uh, better and better month to month through the 2016 season. And he takes strike one from Otero. Well, he's such a dynamic player, as those statistics would attest. And for a second baseman of really gold glove caliber defense to be able to put up those kind of numbers from a run production standpoint, I don't know how you can put a value on it. It's just, it's, he's. Very, very solid, impactful player. 0 oh 2. Dozier taking a couple of strikes. He'll be followed by Maurer and Kepler. Fouled away. Twins have had a runner on in every inning. Two out walk in the first, two out single in the second. And then the fun began in the third with four extra base hits, a couple of two run home runs, then three more doubles, four more runs in the fourth. Blanco had a two out double in the fifth. Check his swing one and two. Ryan Shaw Kyle Crockett getting loose. One hopper to Lindor from the edge of the outfield grass one away. Carsoup.com trivia question regarding four hit games. Joe Maurer had one last night. He's well on his way here tonight with a couple of doubles. Although there'll be a pitching change. Got to be Rod Carew, doesn't it? Probably. Doesn't have to be, but it is Kirby Puckett. 47 four hit games. Yeah, I saw most of those. That's why I thought yeah. it might be the puck. Well, Otero did his job. He got the Indians off the field in the fourth, pitched a scoreless fifth, and got Dozier to start the sixth. Those two men, you've heard about Kepler and his heroics, another home run here tonight. How about Maurer? Six for seven, three doubles, and a home run. And he'll hit next against Kyle Crockett. He hit a double against Crockett when he faced him last night. Manager Terry Francona has seen enough of the uh, left hand hitting Maurer and Kepler and Polanco and Rosario hitting rockets off of right handers. Right to the left hander here for Joe's at bat and you're right Joe's really really swinging the bat well twins just need to get right back into their mode of putting really really good bats together. Each guy one at a time but have a really good at bat Brian did his job hit hard ball hard one hopper right at Lindor at short now it's Joe's turn good at bats. Mauer struck out in the first then doubled and scored in the third and doubled in a run and scored in the fourth.
strike over the inside corner. Indians had a big inning in the first inning. Last night the Twins came back with a game tying run. It was just a single run on a night when they scored a whole bunch, but that home run by Rosario was an awfully big run and set up some good innings later on. Now 0 and 2 to Mauer. Twins chasing Carlos Carrasco in the fourth. And the Indians sending Kyle Gibson to the showers in the fifth. Got him. Two down. And that'll bring up Kepler. Crockett got ahead with a fastball on Joe and then made two really good pitches breaking ball and then burned the outside corner with a fastball to strike him out. Here's Kepler. He walked in the first, hit a two run homer in the third, his longest of the four home runs in this series. Was intentionally walked and scored in the fourth. Slow breaking ball and strike one. Twins mindset right now from a pitching standpoint has the mindset has to be that's all the runs the Indians are going to get. We're going to hold them right there. The hitters on the other hand have to say it's going to take more than those two runs. We've got to get some more. One and one. The only time Kepler didn't hit the ball hard last night it was against Crockett. He had a two hopper but even in that he advanced Maurer from second to third. After his leadoff double, chopped up the line. Audra Martin, is that uh, over in her direction? It was. So a whole lot of range there. One and two to Max Kepler. In. Four hits last night for Kepler, one for one. He's reached all three times here tonight. A high fly deep down the right field line. And a foul ball. Really there were a lot of jaws dropping here at Progressive Field when that ball left home plate. <laughs> I really, really like Max Kepler's approach against left handers. I think he's going to be a very, very positive hitter against left handers. He's always going to hit right handers better. But he has the ability to wait and see the ball, hit the ball, set up to hit fastballs deeper on, on the plate. So that he hangs in pretty well against the breaking balls. That's the, the thing about left hand hitters is they tend to get out in front of their breaking balls from left handers. And Max tends to wait on them fairly well. He takes a fastball down the middle. The Twins go down one, two, three in the top of the sixth.
CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Michael Tonkin, who got the Twins finally off the field in the fifth, will begin the sixth. He'll face Roberto Perez, the number nine batter and catcher for the Cleveland Indians. And then Santana and Kipnis will bat here in the Cleveland sixth. Mauer with a diving catch to his right. And the first pitch after a six run fifth is a bullet headed towards right field, but Mauer picked it off. And we've talked about his athleticism and how well he's making all the plays over at first base. Not too many guys making the dive play either direction than Joe is right now. Perez retired on one pitch and now Santana started the comeback by absolutely crushing a two run home run last inning. His was almost as far to right field as Napoli's was to left. One and oh. And a strike. <laughs> Missing inside two and one. And Tonkin came in. Ended up getting a big strikeout of Almonte. But before that, he walked Naquin. He doesn't want to walk anybody here, though. No. Bring Kipnis up representing the tying run. No, from here on out, walks are really, really dangerous. You just don't want to walk anybody. And at the knees, Santana wanted a free pass. Mm. Oh. At the knees. Yeah, good moving fastball. And of course, Fox Track shows it where it crosses the front of the plate, which is what it should be called out. Oh, no. Santana draws a walk, and now here comes Kipnis. Kipnis has lined out to left, oh, got a walk in the fourth, singled, and scored in the fifth. Saturday, a star studded MLB showdown on FS1. Big Poppy and the Red Sox. Will be swinging for the fences. Adrian Gonzalez and the Dodgers are out to show they have some power of their own. The action begins Saturday, 3 p.m. Central. Or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Tonkin, of course, has a terrible time holding runners, and Santana does have four steals and five tries. On the outside corner, 0 and 2. Good pitch. He finally uh, was able to uh, find the release point on that breaking ball. Got to put a little doubt in uh, Kipnis's mind. Very important. Kipnis up there. He saw the first pitch. Good swing and a fastball. He's just looking fastball right from the on deck circle. That breaking ball ought to slow him down just a little. Base hit right field. Santana will hold up at second base. A walk followed by a base hit, and now Lindor will come up. With runners at first and second. And now the Indians are out hitting the Twins 11 to 10. Lindor had three hits, three singles against Kyle Gibson. And the next time he faces Gibson, he'll tote a rather hefty 8 for 10, 800 batting average into the game Ryan Presley getting loose plenty of outs yet to get in a two run game down and in ball one Tonkin has thrown 24 pitches just 13 strikes he's issued two walks
Kipnis runs well. He represents the tying run. Fall back. Almost into the press box area. Right center field. Kepler is back at the wall, makes the catch. Front runner will tag, and Kepler played that as cool as a cucumber. Two down. Had it all the way. <laughs> a deep warning track fly ball. There was some breeze blowing in, but there's hardly a whisper of a breeze now. That ball nearly made it out. And now Molitor will come out with Napoli due to hit. And he'll get the ball from Michael Tonkin. It's still an 8 6 game. Of them on Mike Napoli's home run. Fourth straight game that he's hit a home run in, and this one was a no doubter. I, I just, you have to laugh when you see a guy hit the ball that hard, that far. That was just an absolute bomb. And you just don't see a guy hit the ball that far very often. So Ryan Presley is on to try to get Napoli out here, keep him in the yard. Presley's been. Pitched very, very well lately. Was in for a save situation at home last weekend. Throwing 98, 99 miles an hour. And that's the reason why he's in the game here. Why Paul Molitor elected to go to Presley instead of Tonkin. He throws, he's got a little bit more velocity and he's got a better uh, swing and miss breaking ball than, than Tonkin does. Napoli is three for six with a home run against Presley. Last ball on the outside corner. Napoli's come up with seven men on base. Gibson got him to hit into a big double play in the first, got him to pop up in the fourth, then the home run in the fifth. Just outside, and it's one and one. Field. Kepler coming in. And that ends it. Presley gets an awfully big out, and we're just in the sixth inning.
the board. Well, the Twins ambush Carlos Carrasco early. Ryan Dozier with the home two-run home run. Max Kepler with a two-run home run. And then in the fourth, they'd come back again and score four runs with Polanco doubling, Mauer doubling, Sano doubling. They would take an 8-0 lead, but then in the fifth inning, just a bunch of base hits by the Indians. Napoli would hit one about nine miles to left field. They weren't done yet. Six hits after two were out would get, end up with a six-run fifth inning, and that's where we are here in the top of the seventh, eight to six twins. Miguel Sano will lead things off, and Brian Shaw will pitch to him to start the seventh inning. But now that Andrew Miller's on this club, Terry Francona has it. Brian Shaw, Andrew Miller, Cody Allen, three really good end of the game type of pitchers. So no chops one in front of the third baseman Ramirez who fires on the run. Got him one away. That was a very nice play by Ramirez. The ball took a funny hop, took him to his right, off balance. He was able to set himself, right, right his uh, momentum and make a good throw. He, See the bouncing ball. This ball will hop right. He yeah. has to feel it. Call throw back across his body. It's a nice play. And now Suzuki. Not only are the Twins not getting any hits, they're having quick at bats. And Sano gone on one pitch. Suzuki's 0 for 3. Come back to the mound grounder to short and fly to right. And a strike call. And Suzuki whistles one past Napoli down the right field line, a one out single. You can follow Twins Baseball Live with the MLB.com at bat app. You can customize that bat to feature the Twins. Stay up to the moment at any moment. With game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Here is Eduardo Escobar, and he is 0 for 3. Outside, ball one. And now inside, two and oh. It's a little cutter. Shaw throws an awful lot of cut fastballs. See that ball. Spinning and moving in on Escobar, the left hand hitter. Suzuki got a cutter as well. The ball moved away from him and he went right with it. Hit the ball past Napoli for a base hit. 3 0. Oh. Zario on deck. Down the middle, three and one. He threw that, throws that little cutter, three and zero. Oh. That's his. That's his best pitch. He'll just keep throwing that, trying to get the ball to move off the fat part of the bat. And now a walk to Escobar, and there'll be runners at first and second with one out. Rosario one for three. Six doubles for the Twins tonight. One here would look awfully nice. Polanco has two doubles. He's in the on deck circle. Last night Polanco had two triples. Tonight he's got two doubles.
popped up near the Cleveland dugout. And out of play. One strike. Rosario hit the big game tying home run in the second inning last night. Twins had a 2 0 lead. Barrios gave up three in the first. And Rosario hooked a changeup into the seats and right. And the Twins put together some good at bats, some good innings, and ended up winning comfortably. Yeah, that was a big home run, huge home run by Eddie Rosario, getting right back in a positive mind set after uh, getting a two run lead and getting it back in the bottom of the inning. Swing and a miss, and it's on two. Chase at that time. That's the pitch he's very vulnerable, or at least was very vulnerable to a high fastball, one and two. But much, much better this uh, stint back with the uh, Twins after seemingly fixing that tendency in AAA. At least getting very, very much better at it. Up the middle. Kipnis steps on the bag, fires across, double play. And the Twins are done in the seventh. And they'll take an 8 6 lead. To the home half of the seven. By T Mobile, a look around the majors. Madison Bumgarner, 10 hits allowed, most in a start this season. And then some thumb issues for Trevor Story. Looks like his season's done. Oh, what a shame. And Alebis Diaz, Cardinal shortstop, also breaking his right thumb uh, during an at bat, getting hit by a pitch. Yeah. 8 6 here. And Ryan Presley got Mike Napoli. And now he'll face Jose Ramirez to start the seventh inning. On the ground, one pitch to Dozier gets the first out. And I was just going to mention we have to remind ourselves Fernando Abad, who in games like this was often given uh, the assignment of getting some big outs in the seventh and the eighth innings. Of course, Abad was traded yesterday. So the Twins don't have the veteran left hander to try to get some big outs. Instead, Rogers, Boshears, and Malone are the left handed relievers. So every out that Presley can get, every quick out, might help the Twins patch together the end of this game. Well, it's going to be Taylor Rogers almost certainly taking the bot's uh, spot as a late inning left hander. One strike to Chisenhall. And a swing and a miss. Good breaking ball there by Ryan Presley. That's the kind of stuff that 
Paul Molitor wanted in the game to stop the uh, Indians from, from taking the lead back in the sixth inning. 97 mile an hour fastball got Napoli to pop up and now he's made good pitches to both Ramirez and Chisholm Hall. He's got good stuff. Again, Ryan Presley's biggest issues in the past have just been command. When he's strike, strike, strike with both the fastball and the curveball, he's generally very, very good. So he gets the curveball here. And a swing and a miss. Suzuki picks up the loose ball, sets and fires two down. High fastball up and away, and then the breaking ball in the dirt gets a strikeout two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Minnesota Twins LLC. Well, so Presley got a big out in the sixth. Now a couple of quick outs in the seventh, and here's Tyler Naquin. Good examples of how bat missing his stuff can be. 96 mile an hour fastball, sometimes more than that. Really good 12 to 6 curveball, sharp break. Down and in ball one to Naquin. Presley's got three outs on nine pitches. Naquin drew a walk off of Michael Tonkin, who was the first Twins reliever. Two and zero. Oh. And a base hit to left. Nickel slaps a single on a 2 0 pitch. That'll bring up El Monte. Nickel's had a pretty quiet series, but his two out single keeps the inning alive. And now El Monte will bat. Two strikeouts and a double. Yep, 2 0 counts make every hitter better. And uh, go up there no matter how hard a guy throws. He pretty. Pretty convinced you're going to get a fastball. It's a lot easier to hit than when you have any kind of doubt in your mind. That's why it's so important to get ahead of hitters. Outside to El Monte. Dozen pitches for Presley, seven strikes. And that ball is thrown by Maurer, and Naquin decides not to try. Thankfully for the Twins, that ball appeared to hit the padding and a long carom about 25 feet into fair territory. And so, what would have put Naquin at second base instead is just an errant pickoff throw. I think this is a real good trip to the mound here by. Kurt Suzuki. You see Preston getting behind Naquin 2 0, then getting behind El Monte 1 0 in between time throwing the ball down almost down the right field line. Good time to go out and remind his pitcher what kind of how good a stuff he has if he'll just throw it in the strike zone. Just let's just get back in the strike zone to get this guy out. Fouled away one and one. By a fan here. Oh, diving catch over there. Leaping catch. Outside, now two and one. Ground ball to do. Inning over. And Presley pitches a scoreless seventh. And we head to the eighth. Twins up by two.
Right here, it's eight to six. Jorge Polanco will lead off the eighth inning against Shaw. It will be Polanco, Santana, and Dozier. And to add intrigue to this game, not that it needs any, but from the Cleveland perspective, they fell behind eight nothing. They've made a game of it eight six, and the Tigers are thumping the White Sox ten to six. And it's the Tigers who are putting a little heat on Terry Francona and the Indians. Four game lead coming into play today. One strike to Polanco. Twins need to change the number here. We've talked about that a lot. They need another number. Some kind of number here in the eighth inning would be very, very good. Two triples last night for Polanco, two doubles today. And now he takes outside, two and one. have only had the leadoff man on once. That was in the third inning when Santana doubled. Blanco swings and misses. Back foot spins out as he swings. Good pitch there. That cutter down and in. Tough for really tough on left-handers who liked fastball down and in. Looks like a fastball and then disappears below the bat. That's a that's a tough pitch. Twins don't have anybody warming up in their bullpen, which gives us uh, the suggestion that Ryan Presley got the Twins off the field in the sixth, had a decent seventh, might get the eighth inning as well. Taylor Rogers was warming up as Presley was pitching in the seventh. Two and two to Polanco and Santana and Dozier. And foul. Over well, last, last night it was just over 15,000, 15,835 the paid tonight. Indians last night, prior to the game, had the best record in the American League, and frankly, the crowds here are a little disappointing for this series. Indians came into this series having swept the A's here over the weekend. Another 2 2 to Polanco. 3 and 2. Good take there by Polanco, laying off the cutter down and in. Wasn't quite as nasty a pitch as the one he swung and missed, but still saw that ball better. Chopper, left side. Ramirez has it. Throws across. Polanco retired. One away. The Twins Flex Plan gives you the flexibility to choose your games and your number of seats. You can choose in advance or even the day of the game. Don't plan. Flex Plan. Go to twinsbaseball.com/flex or call 833 Twins to learn more. One down and now Danny Santana. A double. A single, a line out, two runs scored. And the Twins with four runs in the third, four runs in the fourth, and haven't scored since, obviously. Montana shows bunt, takes a strike. And now Taylor Rogers is warming up after the first out. That's down the left field line and it'll twist foul into the seats. 0 and 2. And there's Rogers. Yeah, I think he was ready. I think he got ready early for uh, last inning and knew he had he was gonna have the bottom of the eighth, so he sat down for a second, a little rest, and he'll get get loose for the bottom of the eighth. Up the first baseline, foul ball. Happily reached across the line, and first base umpire Manny Gonzalez said it was a foul ball. So Santana will get another swing. See if Danny can grind out a base hit here. He's had some really good battling at bats after he's gotten to two strikes, gotten some hits. Well, 
one and two. So that's down the third base line. Nice fielding play. But Santana will get a base hit. Ramirez ended over by the tarp with Santana chopping one almost over the third base bag. It's a one out single. Well it was a good at bat by Danny. He did grind himself out of base hit. Twins have a speedy runner on first base with one out trying to get him around. Change the number make it a three run game. Let me see what the Twins. Scouting report is on Shaw his ability to hold runners. Everybody knows Perez has got a really strong arm behind the plate. This would be an opportunity with the second baseman Kipnis playing very close to the second base bag and Dozier with a pretty big hole on the right side. We'll see how the Twins play it here. So Montana checked back at first immediately. This will be interesting for sure. Perez very very good behind the plate defensively and especially throwing as Dick mentioned Santana I think has his manager Paul Molitor's confidence as being the best base to now on the club. So it's all on Shaw. We'll see what kind of move he has. Outside ball one. If if he has that move and not a slide step Danny's going to steal it. I don't care how well Perez throws that's I, I believe that's going to be too slow to the play. That leg kick. We'll see. Twins still have the league leader in stolen bases, Eduardo Nunez, but he's now playing in the National League. Big pop up. It's back and out of play. Shot quick pitch Danny there a little bit. Came set and went right to the plate. No look at all. One and one. So right now on the Twins bench they've had the stopwatch on Shaw they will know from his first move what the time is by the uh, from the time his he first moves until it hits the catcher's glove and if it's over one point four or five then Daniel go. Doesn't go and Dozier lines up base hit to right field Santana around second he'll dig for third and the throw. To Lindor. So Dozier drives a sharp single to right. And Santana advances to third. Terrific at bat by Brian Dozier there, taking that cutter, hitting right back at the ball. Perfect. The ball, see the ball breaking away. It ends up on the outside corner. Brian doesn't try to pull it, lines in in the right center. Gets a little first or third action going here. Really good at bat by Brian. You saw Fox Tracks presented by Carrier, and now you're about to see Terry Francona. A rare thing for Francona. A mid inning pitching change. <laughs> Shaw leaves. Twins threatening to expand a two run lead. First, we want to 
telling you about the Fox Sports North and the viewing party tomorrow beginning at 5 30 p.m. at JJ's Clubhouse in Minneapolis. You can watch the Twins take on the Indians. Enjoy food and drink specials. Register for tickets and prizes and more. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on upcoming events on the Hot Topics bar. When the Indians announced the arrival of Andrew Miller yesterday, Terry Francona said he may use him in the eighth inning, may use him in the seventh inning if the situation aligned itself uh, for that to happen. I would think this would be one of those situations with two left-handed batters, and you and I both looked at each other when we saw who was coming through the bullpen door. Well, I I don't like to uh, second guess. Number one, I really don't even like to first guess a uh, uh, manager like. Terry Francona but with the opportunity to have a just a absolute wipeout left hander pitch to left handers Maurer and Kepler I'm just I'm surprised Now Maurer is only one for five against Cody Allen but he doesn't need a base hit here sack fly works a ground ball that is not a dull play works that third run is huge in my view and I'm just check your swing ball one I'm just surprised that we didn't go with them that uh, Francona didn't go with the more seemingly guaranteed potential strikeouts of Maurer and Kepler and Andrew Miller and not Cody Allen and, and that's I don't mean to denigrate Cody Allen he's, right. he's a terrific pitcher but want to know to Maurer Joe just needs to hit a fly ball here he doesn't even need to get he doesn't need to get a hit and now a called strike Maurer hit a home run against Miller last night. And Shaw, or excuse me, Allen is very good against both righties and lefties. Yes. Mowers had a really good series, six for eight, with three doubles and a home run. The home run again coming against Miller. Bozier checked it first. Twins haven't scored since the fourth. Indians haven't scored since the fifth. You can see Allen's numbers and why he was so good. It has been for a couple of years now for the uh, Indians. 20 saves. Well, this is in effect. This is in effect a safe situation for uh, Terry Francona. He just does not want to give up one more run. So he's gone with the guy he thinks is going to is going to save the ball game within two runs. Fouled away now one and two. Tonight Maurer has a pair of doubles and two strikeouts. We saw Allen's numbers: 57 strikeouts in 45 in a third innings. And Francona feels that. What he needs here is a strikeout, and that Allen can get it for him. One and two to Maurer. Single the 13th hit for the Twins. One and two. Driven foul. Here's where Joe is really good, being willing to. Watch that fastball a long time, hit the ball to left field so that he's not out in front of Cody Allen's off speed stuff. Another one, two to Maurer. Popped up. Back and out of play. Back to back hits here in the eighth inning. And to loosen the collar a bit. Got really tight after the sixth run, fifth inning.
Double playgrounder. Kipnis to Lindor. Low throw. Got him. And Maurer wraps into a double play. And Allen gets the job done. It's still eight to six as we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Taylor Rogers will come in to try to get the three outs of the eighth inning. Roberto Perez, the number nine batter, will be the first man he'll face, and then switch hitting Carlos Santana, left hand batting Jason Kipnis. Just didn't anticipate having to need all these relievers to protect an eight nothing lead. Perez takes outside ball one. He is 0 for three. He is two for 32 on the season. Lined out to Maurer, who picked off a base hit, diving to his right his last time up. And now a strike one and one. Rogers much more effective against left handed batters, but he has brought his right handed batting average down under 300. Strike two, and it's one and two. There's that big breaking ball. Very, very good pitch. Very effective, especially against left handers, as you see the splits there. His ability to command the, his fastball against right handers will really be the key for him going forward. And now another breaking ball in the dirt, two and two. That sweeping breaking ball that he has, very, very difficult for left handers to see well. They, it breaks up bigger than they anticipate. Got a sharp, late, big break, kind of break to it, but right handers has not been as effective. Missed inside with a fastball, and it's a full count. And that's the main reason why. He's got to be effective with a fastball against right handers. The curveball's not as tough on right handers, so he's got to be able to be a lot better with both of those pitches against right handers, especially fastballs. Go ahead, curveball here. Three and two to the leadoff man in the eighth. Busted his back. Dozier underhands it and makes the play one away. 
Rogers absolutely splintered Perez's bat, but then didn't field the ground ball. It's an alert play by Brian Dozier, one away. Another terrific defensive play by Brian Dozier, potentially game saving, and that you can't let this guy get on. This ball needs to be fielded. Brian comes in. How he's able to get that much on a backhand flip? Watch this backhand flip from 50 feet <laughs> and have enough on it to get Perez. That's a terrific play. Switch hitter Carlos Santana. Down and away, ball one. Santana's seen Rogers twice, gotten a base hit, and struck out. And in the center field, Santana with a single, and that'll bring Kipnis up. Talk a lot about Maurer's defensive play at first base, and right next to him is Brian Dozier, who's had a good couple of weeks in the field too. Uh, he's played absolutely great. This this was a terrific play right here. We, we're used to that one. His ability to throw from funny angles and get something on it is one of his best attributes. This play right here is about as good as it gets, and then of course that dive play. He's very adept at, but I'll tell you what, that play that we just saw quickly running into center field and getting the third out in the sixth inning when Jose Barrios was about to come apart there, that was a huge play. Here's Kipnis. Takes strike one. Kipnis handles left handers well, but he doesn't hit for nearly as much power against left handers as he does right handers. Nevertheless, he stands in there representing the tying run. He held it one and one. Like most left handers, Kip, left handed hitters against left handed pitchers, Kipnis less of thinking about pulling the ball and more uh, waiting to identify the difference between fastball and curveball. He uses the whole more of the field against left handers, hence less power. Two and one. And with the trade of Fernando Abad, this role now belongs. To Taylor Rogers. Fly ball right field. Kepler over. On the track makes the catch out number two. And that'll bring up Francisco Lindor. Praise FM invites you to Faith Night. 2016 a post game event following the August 13th game between the twins and the Royals you can enjoy the game then stay for post game live worship music and appearances by Brian Dozier Kyle Gibson and other special guests for details and tickets visit twinsbaseball.com slash faith night Brandon Kinsler getting loose he's picked up four out saves before Lindor a switch hitter will hit against Rogers swing and a foul one strike if the inning gets past Lindor we might have Kinsler coming in to pitch to Napoli Lindor hit 336 against left handed pitcher 290 against right hand so he's on his, his good side his better side in terms of average hasn't had the home runs per uh, at bat right hand. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Two really good broken balls there. Checked his swing. Nice block by Suzuki. Earlier this year, of course, Rogers made his major league debut, and now here he is in the eighth inning. And he gets some big outs in a two run game.
One and two. Bouncer to short. Escobar goes to Dozier and Rogers passes the test in the eighth inning. And we head to the ninth. Eight six twins. Just fine after Kyle Gibson was knocked out in the fifth inning. This was a bullpen, the start of the year that was supposed to have Perkins and Jepson and Abad and so on and so forth. And a big eighth inning pitch by Taylor Rogers. Kinsler will be set up to pitch just the ninth inning now. And uh, in the top of the inning, Max Kepler will lead things off against Adams, who will come out and be the fifth. Relief pitcher for the Indians here tonight. Kepler, Sano, and Suzuki trying to increase what is now a two run lead. And the bullpen had to A, get the Twins off the field with the lead in the fifth, and now they backed it up by pitching a scoreless sixth, seventh, and eighth. Kepler has walked twice and hit another two run home run here tonight. Up and away, ball one. Indians have gotten a total of five and two thirds innings from their vaunted starting rotation in the first two games of this series. Two and home. Carrasco got into the fourth inning, but wasn't able to pitch through it. Last night, Salazar was knocked out without getting it out in the third. 3 and 0 now to Kepler. I turn him loose here. See if he can get a home run. If he plays 20 years in the big leagues and he doesn't get the green light now, he might never get the green light, but he takes ball 4. For Minnesota now. And now Miguel Sano. Sano with a two run double in the four run fourth inning. You know it's funny that you don't as a manager you don't turn your guys loose three and oh give them the green light all the time even the same guy but with uh, Max Kepler swinging as hot as he is on fastballs you figure to get a three and oh fastball I bet Paul gave him the green light there. There'll come a time when Max is not swinging the bat as well and you'll need a base run. Paul will need a base runner and get three and oh and he won't be given the green light. But right there, I got a pretty good idea that Paul uh, turned him loose. So no, it took a fastball in the inner half for strike one. You now the breaking balls will come. Nope, fastball inside, one and one. Perez set up outside, and the pitch sailed over. Or inside off the plate, one and one. Yeah. 
Half swing, but he went. On a breaking ball. He's trying to get back on the scoreboard. Haven't scored since the fourth. Two and two. Suzuki on deck. Twins have a bench tonight of Centeno, Grossman, Vargas, and Buxton. Okay. We get down to the bottom of the order and maybe use a pinch runner. Buxton's available. Swing and a miss, and Sano strikes out for the first time tonight. Another curveball down. Sano out in front. Suzuki singled to right his last time up. And Kepler dives back. So far in this series, he's done everything but steal a base. He's got a couple in two tries. Tigers beat the White Sox 11 of 5. And a breaking ball over. Here's a situation I think is likely to, uh, if. Ball and starts Kepler will be in a, in a hit and run type situation with Suzuki at the plate. Good contact hitter, one out. If he can get a count that he likes, talking about Paul there, if Paul gets a count that he likes, he might start Kepler to see if Kurt can find a hole somewhere. Strike to Suzuki. And now inside. The manager's mind a situation like this. You say, okay, I want like to stay out of the goal of play. I got a guy that can make contacts, not going to swing and miss. And I ask him to make contact on a hit and run. On the other hand, he, Suzuki's also swung the bat very, very well, hitting 340 for the last month or so. Kepler goes pitch up and in Kepler with a steal of second his third major league stolen base. So it was a straight steal and that's where I was uh, was going there with guys swinging the bat as well as Kurt is the other thing a manager's thinking is I kind of don't want to just take the bat out of his hands can, can my guy steal the base so I can still have my hot hitter with a chance to drive it in Kepler got a good jump. Good head first slide right to the bag. And now a hit to the outfield might give the Twins that all important insurance run. Two and one the count to Suzuki. Up short right field. Chisenhall in a step or two. That's out number two. And we'll bring up Escobar. Escobar walked his last time up. He's carrying an 0 for 3 into this at bat. Didn't think it was going to be a nail biter, but Paul Molitor has been biting them since the fifth inning.
Tap the first pitch foul, one strike. Twins with a four run third. Two doubles, two home runs. A four run fourth. And then saw the Indians score six times in the fifth inning. One and one. Adams throwing a lot of breaking balls. See if, he, if Escobar can get a low fastball. He's a good low fastball hitter. He's had a knack for driving in big runs in his career with the, with the Twins. This would be a big one. After a high fastball at 96, and it's one and two. Yeah, that's not the one he wants. He's not as good up there, especially left handed. He's much better down in the strike zone. Taking a lot of time between pitches. And Perez and Adams will talk about it. Kansas City beat Tampa Bay three to two. Orioles beat Texas five to one. One and two to Eduardo Escobar. Jack this swing. Two and two. That's the ball he swung and missed, just a pitch a goal. He was able to lay off of it that time. Really in search of a low strike here. Fastball or breaking ball, ground knee high. What's a throw down there? A drive to right field. Chisenhall goes back. It's gone. A home run for Escobar. A two run home run, and the lead is doubled in the ninth. Escobar's fifth of the year and another two run home run for the Twins. Another big RBI late in the game for Escobar and he got the pitch he needed. Said he looking for the ball down. Curveball. Right down in his in his happy zone right there. And it almost didn't matter to me as I said fastball or breaking ball just have it be down there. Escobar. Huge, huge home run, obviously. Now ground ball, Kipnis with a nice backhanded pickup. Flips to first, and that ends the inning. But one pitch too late for the Indians. Escobar's home run pads the lead to four.
First two games of this series and the Twins have uh, made some history. 19 extra base hits. Eight of them have been home runs. Six of them have been two run home runs. And a big one by Escobar making it now a 10 to 6 ball game. Twins scored 12 runs last night, 10 tonight. It's the best pitching staff in the American League. Well, a remarkable show of offensive ability, hitting ability by the Twins. Just player after player up and down the lineup having good at bats and putting great swings on uh, uh, against these in good Indian pitchers that just pummeling the ball. Now Brandon Kinsler in the game. Not a safe situation. But you can't do it, but you're almost feeling a, a, you should a, give Taylor Rogers a save a for what perfect. he did in the eighth <laughs> inning. Yeah, he pitched he pitched really, really well in the eighth and, and the manager right here, this is a game you just after score have an eight to nothing lead in the fifth, you just have to have this game. You want your closer in this game. Strike down the middle of Napoli. I was going to talk about how comforting it is to pitch to Napoli with a two run lead, and now the twins have a four run lead. He's homered in four straight games. His two run home run in the fifth, part of a six run inning for Cleveland. And it might have been the hardest baseball I've ever seen hit. Well, it's up there. One and one. And now one and two. But even with the two run lead, even if Escobar hadn't hit that gigantic home run uh, in the last inning, if you told Paul Molitor to start the game that Carrasco is going to be on the mound for the Indians, but you're going to have a two run lead in the ninth yeah. inning and Kinsler is rested and ready to go, he'd have taken it. Na and, and by the way, Napoli's going to lead off. He won't be the tying run in the ninth. Right. So I think he'd have taken that. One and two to Napoli. Swing and a miss, got him. One down and now Ramirez. Well, like I said earlier in the game, you can pitch to him. He strikes out a lot, and he Kinsler shows him two hard sinking running in fastballs, and then you can see his rear end leaving there. He was protecting against that fastball running in. Kinsler got him on the slider away. So very, very well pitched at bat to Napoli. Strike on the outside corner. Kinsler, after the trading deadline passed yesterday, said he was greatly relieved. He'd heard his name mentioned in some trade rumors, really has enjoyed getting a chance to pitch for and then later close games for the Minnesota Twins. One and one. And at the knees. You know, it's really mixed emotions for a player when you hear your name in, in, is, uh, in trade rumors. It is We look at this is his bread and butter right here. Look at that ball sink. Yeah. So a hard sink. That's what I really have been impressed with the velocity and move the combination movement. Check swing. But you hear your name in trade rumors going to contending clubs who want you to come and pitch late in you know, late in the game for contending teams. It's tremendously it's got to be tremendously flattering. At the same time this is where he's kind of establishing himself. He likes it here in Minnesota. And, you know in that situation you don't want to be traded. Hey right over the head of Chisinau. Whoa. Those scare me. And get me on my soapbox from time to time. Two and two. Do you have any issue if you just took the on deck circle, took your stuff, and went behind the batter like they do in Little League? Do what now? Have Chisenhall, in this case, go over to this on deck circle like they do in Little League for safety's sake. That ball could have been five feet lower. We hit him right in the head. On the ground, Maurer, nice knockdown. Kinsler at the bag, two down. And that'll bring up Chisenhall. Game three of the series tomorrow. 
Trevor Bauer will go for the Cleveland Indians. Tyler Duffy, who was banished to the bullpen for about 24 hours, back in the rotation. He'll start tomorrow. Then the new twin, Hector Carrasco, will be starting the series finale on Thursday. He was supposed to arrive here in Cleveland sometime tonight. That's uh, what's next, brought to you by CenturyLink. Two down, and here's Chisinau. Another terrific play by Joe Maurer. That that was a really, really good play. When it's one thing to dive and stretch out. And this Back game, this to Kinsler. And the Twins have come to Cleveland, facing the team with the best record in the American League. They've scored 22 runs and picked up two wins. About as impressive offensive performance as you can have, as evidenced by the two-game record of extra base hits. And I'm going to tell you what, this young Twins team has found something at the plate in this streak right here. They are just absolutely pounding the baseball against guys that are no slouches on the mound. Danny Salazar last night, Anthony, knocked out in the third inning. And Carlos Carrasco in the fourth here tonight. And this Twins lineup very productive and a couple of early wins on this road trip. 